Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everybody. It's time for our annual audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It helps us understand our audience better, know what you like and don't like, how you listen to the show. It also helps us tell advertisers what kind of people listen. But I promise you, your feedback is always kept personally anonymous. All you have to do is visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It'll just take a few minutes and it'll help us make Twit even better. We really appreciate your support and any help you can give us, twit.tv slash survey. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on Valentine's Day, Sunday, February 14th, 2016. This is episode 1,262. Enjoy! This episode of the Tech Guy is brought to you by PillPack, a full-service pharmacy that combines convenient packaging, modern technology, and personalized service to make your life easier. Visit PillPack.com slash twit to save $20 on vitamins and OTCs when you transfer your prescriptions. And by Epson's new EcoTank printers with Epson's line of Super Tank all-in-one printers. You can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit Epson.com slash EcoTank to find out more. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100-plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte, the tech guy here. Time to talk computers and the internet. And technology of all kinds, you know, smart phones and smart watches and smart thermostats and smart doorbells and smart doorknobs and whatever's on your mind. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. If you want to talk high tech, that's, you know, that's what we do every weekend right here. And I hope you will join me. 8888-ASK-LEO. You don't have to call. You can just listen quietly in the corner. You could be the like the kids and who didn't want to sit in the front row. Some people want to sit in the front row and raise their hand and interact with the teacher. And some people want to sit in the back row and just quietly take it all in. And then there's the kids in the way back row who'll throw spitballs and make jokes. And that's the chat room. <laughs> if you want to be the those kids, uh, we have a great chat room. IRC.twit.tv. We use the ancient internet relay technology called IRC, uh, Internet Relay Chat. Uh, predates the World Wide Web. It's old-fashioned, but it works. It's just text, text, text. Uh, IRC.twit.tv, that's the website. Or, you know what, it's all at our regular main site, techguylabs.com. The phone number's there, the chat room's there, everything. Answers to the questions, and there's no sign-up, nothing you need to do, just uh, techguylabs.com. Happy Valentine's Day. Do not give a geek a gift, a, get a technology gift for Valentine's, unless you really know that geek well. Maybe you do. Some, some, it's better for a geek to give a technology gift to a non-geek because you have the expertise and you could say, here, you know, Kim Schaffer, I'd like to give you a new smartphone. And then, yes, and Kim goes, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, better to do that. In any event, if, if you are gifting a geek today, uh, I can help that process along a little bit. Uh, lots of lots of cool gadgets out there. I've always I never wanted to be the gadget guy. You know, uh, for I've been doing this for many moons, actually decades. I'm embarrassed to admit, uh, helping people with technology since the uh, late '70s. Uh, first writing, and then in radio, and then in television, and then back to radio because I have a face for radio. And uh, and and I started, of course, when you start in the 70s, it's computing. We didn't even have the Internet till the 90, early 90s. Uh, answering questions on the radio, I remember kind of, you know, when we went from Windows 3.1 <laughs> and, and DOS 5. Oh, those were the days. And of course, we also had 
interrupt conflicts. Don't miss those. Uh, to telling people how they could get internet access, what the internet was, helping people get started in the internet. And I know that was good. Computers in the internet. But uh, around about uh, mid-2000s, maybe even a little earlier, it started to be a little bit about gadgets, smartphones. You know, the iPhone really broke that wide open in 2007. Uh, nine years ago. It's going to be like nine years ago. Wow. And it's become more and more about little uh, G-Jaws. But see, I still think of uh, a smartphone really as, the, as just a computer in your pocket. It's a very powerful computer, but it's kept pocketable. Pretty neat. Pretty amazing. And some gadgets are just shiny toys that are, you know, disposable and not great. And some gadgets are something that's going to be useful and it's going to change your world. The smartphone, I think, changed our world, didn't it? The uh, idea that you could carry something in your pocket that would always be connected to the global internet. Wow. That you could, a, a, a universal communicator that could let you talk to people anywhere in the world, even in a different language, would translate for you. Wow. That's, a, that's like science fiction stuff. We take it all for granted because it happened gradually, it snuck up on us, but really, that's science fiction stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's dopey. You know, I, I call the Apple Watch kind of dopey. And I think smartwatch is a little dopey still. I'm a little, I'm more, I'm kind of more into it. <laughs> I wear the Apple Watch every day now because uh, I exercise more. <laughs> Good thing, right? And the watches, of all the, of all the fitness devices I've used, from the Fitbit Surge, that's the, you know, that's the president's watch, the, fit, the Fitbit Surge. Fitbit's the best seller in this category. To the jawbone up, to the this, to the that to the misfit clipped onto my belt. To the, I mean, I've worn them all, sometimes more than one at a time. But I have to say, the, the Apple Watch, from a pure fitness point of view, is the most accurate when it comes to heart rate, even at high, higher heart rates, you know, when you're actually elevated and working. Uh, it, it's, it keeps track of my steps well. It's got, you know, some nice features to it. A few things I'd like to improve, and I think we'll see improvements. It bugs me that it's not always on. Like a normal wristwatch, you look at it, it's on. The watch comes on when you, if you do it just right. <laughs> you tilt, if you tilt your wrist just so, it'll come on. In fact, sometimes you see people with Apple Watches like jerking their wrist. Trying, it's really not, the, it's not a jerk. It's just a, a gentle like this. But you can see it come on. You know it was off. And sometimes it doesn't come on. It's just a blank screen mocking you in your face. And so that's something I'd improve. A wristwatch should be able to tell the time. <laughs> kind of basic, fundamental, you know. But but look, when, you, when you're an early adopter, when you use technology that's, you know, brand new, cutting edge, of course you're going to find disappointment. I'm more and more convinced that, that wearables are going to be a big category. Just as carrying a computer in your pocket you know, changed our lives. I think the idea of a small computer that you're wearing somewhere that can tell, give you uh, information about your body, about sleep habits, about exercise habits. Now, right now, all we have is, glor is basically a glorified pedometer. In some cases, maybe a, a heart rate monitor. But I don't think we're so far off from a time when we'll know much more. When uh, if you're monitoring your blood glucose level because you're diabetic you can actually monitor it continuously without a pin prick uh if you're an athlete monitoring your use your oxygen use your what they call vo2 max which tells you a lot about your ability to work efficiently and how hard you're working your your blood pressure a lot of us would would be hugely benefited to have constant blood pressure monitoring because your blood pressure varies wildly through the day and, uh, and what you really want more is like the average, not, not any individual measurement. There's so much we could do with these things, and they don't do yet. An Apple Watch is not, doesn't do anything but heart rate and steps, basically, motion. I uh, yesterday met some people from a company uh, that uh, are going to do a Kickstarter soon that I'm very intrigued by. They Right now, they, their, their basic technology is a... Uh, a laser scanner for cavities, not dental cavities, for holes. And uh, 
they're using it in two ways. One, to measure very precisely the shape and size of screws on F-18 fighter jets. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of screws on an F-18 fighter jet, and each has to be, or ideally would be exactly measured, the screw would be exactly measured for the screw hole. Well, they've got a technique that does this using lasers. And what they did to me is they scanned my ear. They scanned the inside of my ear and made a perfect map of it. And then while I was sitting there, 3D printed an in ear a headphone that fits your ear perfectly. You know, just goes right into your ear. Like it was like a glove. And of course, every ear is unique. And so it's like a, like a fingerprint. So it's like my, these headphones only would fit me, but they fit beautifully, like comfortably right in there. So I said, well, that's nice. I mean, those are headphones. That's nice. That's comfortable. A lot of musicians wear in-ear monitors like that. They said, well, here's the thing. The Kickstarter we're going to do, we're going to put an electroencephalogram, an EEG in there. that'll be able to measure alpha, beta, and gamma brain waves. Because it turns out that ear canal right there, you are putting, you can put a sensor right against a very thin membrane that they can see the blood. They can measure blood oxygen. They can measure heart rate. They can measure glucose. Hearables. Get ready, folks. That's a gadget. Hearables. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Let's take your calls next. Yeah, you would not have to do a pinprick. There are continuous blood glucose measurers that you wear, um, but I still think that they have a little thing <laughs> that sticks into you. Um, Dr. Mom would be more expert on this stuff than I am. But I feel like we're, we're coming close to a new era they shave off the top layer of skin to measure glucose. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So they're kind of non-invasive. Oh, yeah. It's to save battery. That's exactly why they do it. Yeah. I'm, I, I wasn't... I, I understand why they do it. So this is my, this is my new thing. O-Drive. For Windows or Mac. I sign in with my Google in this case, for me, in this case. And then uh, look what happens here. O-Drive has all of these cloud drives, syncs with all of these. Amazon, Dropbox, Facebook, Gmail, Google Drive, Instagram, and OneDrive. So all of those files are available, but they don't, necess they don't get downloaded unless you need them. Yeah, modern love the podcast. Everybody's doing podcasts now. Everybody. Crazy. They discovered podcasts. I don't understand. It is a podcast renaissance. It is. I was wrong. I was mocking it. But you know what? Something amazing is going on with these things. It's like everybody just discovered them. I know what happened. Podcasts were too hard for people to use until uh, smartphones had podcast apps, and now it's not a tra it's you don't have a you don't have to sync it to an iPod anymore. You just uh, subscribe in your podcast app or or the Twit app or whatever on your phone, and it's just there. So it's so easy, and that was always the key to podcasts was it was so difficult to, to for people to get it. Okay, so now I've logged in to my uh, O-Drive. And what happens is I have a, now a folder on my hard drive that's the old drive folder. Now, it's kind of a weird folder. Let me get rid of the installer. Because it doesn't really have anything in it. <laughs> But it has all the links to all my cloud stuff when I need it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, I love her on Valentine's Day. And she's wearing red because, well, it's Valentine's Day. Kim Schaffer, the, our phone ranger. I need a name for you because really uh, phone that? ranger is... is, is uh, what? <laughs> How quickly we forget. It's one Heather's woman, nickname. One day, one the next. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm fickle that way. Love them and leave them. So uh, we'll come up with a new name for Kim Schaffer. Anyway, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. 
Did your honey uh, send you a little something? A little? I hear it's coming later in the week. <laughs> Work got in the you way. You know, don't blame <laughs> men. We're just not good at this stuff. But I got a call warning me. You got a call. <laughs> he did it. Like many guys, he waited to the last minute. And, you know, that's it's. Why he do you think we have all text. those ads for like the Vermont teddy bear factory? Don't worry, we could get you a Valentine's gift to your Valentine. The thing is, Valentine's Day on Sunday, that's tough. It is. I do that flower means people even deliver. Pre planning. Oh, yeah, they deliver. But. <laughs> You pay more. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's tough. It's tough. Nowadays, though, I think there's no excuse, guys, because we have the Internet. That's what I was thinking. And you I, don't, you can, pay. even if you've got a busy day, <laughs> you can, you got to take a break and you can take out your phone and you can press a button and flowers arrive or, or something, a gift arrives. It's, it really, there's little excuse these days. We don't have to go out of the house even to get instant delivery. Isn't that amazing, though? It is That's amazing. something that's changed a lot. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. I can now, thanks to my Amazon Echo, uh, which made its kind of, I think, world debut on Sunday on the Super Bowl. Uh, they were bad ads, though. You probably don't even remember them. Alec Baldwin and no, strange know. Missy Elliott. And it was weird ads that didn't really <laughs> tell people what the Echo does, which is it makes your home listen to you. They've solved a very difficult technical problem, which is having a microphone in a room that can understand speech everywhere in the room. So you can say, you say, you know, hey, uh, Echo. You actually use a different name. I won't use that because I don't want to wake up others. <laughs> Echoes. You say, hey, Echo, what time is it? And a very nice lady will say it's 4.30. Uh, set an alarm for uh, 8 a.m. And a very nice lady said, okay, your alarm's set for 8 a.m. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay. And then you can say, by the way, Oh, how long in that timer? Oh, you got four more minutes. It's like your home's talking to you. It gets more and more elaborate. Ecobee just announced thermostats that you could say, set the temperature to 72 degrees, and it'll do it. It's a little creepy. No. What's creepy? It's helpful, but it's... It's uh, listening to yeah, you and acting upon... You can now say, order a pizza, and Domino's will deliver it. I know. You can say, get me a car, Uber will pull up. <laughs> I think that's cool. That's what we wanted. Didn't you want that? Isn't that maybe just people who read a lot of science fiction? Yeah. By the way, Alex uh, Bald Alec Baldwin used it to order cashmere socks. Okay. You can do that. It, it, it's an interest because it's Amazon, right? So, of course, why did Amazon do this? To help you shop faster and easier. And you can order anything from Amazon. But normally what it'll do is just put it on a shopping list, which you can then confirm your Amazon shopping list. But if you're an Amazon Prime member and you order a product regularly or on Amazon Prime, you can reorder. So like if Alec Baldwin always, you know, every few weeks would order a pair of socks, he could say, get me another pair of those socks. And the Echo would know, oh, those socks? Yeah. The $250 cashmere <laughs> tan socks? Yeah, I can get you those. So and they would arrive in two days. People. I think that's very interesting. Now, some people... Somebody in the chat room is saying it already. Teach One is saying, always listening equals creepy. I really want to come explain what it's doing here. Because I think I understand it's that people think... Habits. No, no, it's no. not. People think that... I know people, and smart people think, that the Samsung TV... This was a, this was a story a year ago that somehow resurfaced. You all saw it probably on Facebook. Is listening to you. Or the Amazon Echo is listening to you. Or the Xbox One is listening to you. Or your phone is listening to you. All of those things have microphones that are on. But they're not... It's not like whatever you say is sent back to Amazon. It's not. It's not. It, it, we know it's not. You can observe the traffic and know, oh, it's not. What it's doing... Is, is is that thing has a chip in it called a digital media processor. And the chip is really good at seeing your voice as waves, sound waves. We've all seen those sine wave generators that take audio and make it go bzz, bzz, bzz. So the, the thing is is just seeing the bzz, 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 bzz. It doesn't understand the bzz, 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 bzz. It's not sending it to Amazon. It's just saying bzz, 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 bzz. But when that bzz, 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 matches a pattern that it has in there, that means its name, and this is why, by the way, in most cases, you have just a couple of choices on that name, uh, if, if, if even that. With, uh, with Apple's Siri, you, you can, that's all you can call her, right? Because she's listening for bzz, 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 and then she hears Siri, and she goes, yeah, what, huh? Now, anything you say after that is sent 
to Apple or Google or Amazon or X or Microsoft's Xbox or um, that or the Samsung TV. That's when stuff gets sent because you triggered it with a trigger word. It it's it's inefficient and it's of course creepy if it's listening all the time. That but it's be. not. It's listening in the sense that it's it's hearing looking for the right shape. It doesn't. It's not a thing, a human. It's just a machine. It's just a machine. So there's nothing creepy about it. It's just, it's listening for the right. When it hears that, it goes, what? Oh, yeah. Now, it still doesn't understand it. But what? It, but it listens for the next few things you say until there's a pause. And it takes that chunk of and sends it to the home office, which then says, what, is, what does that mean? And that's when they start analyzing it. And then they say, oh, she wants Casimir socks. Okay. That's all good, in my opinion. Now, if you don't like it, you can turn it off. Don't have to buy an Echo. They're expensive, 180 bucks. Don't buy it. Don't have to buy a Samsung TV. Buy an LG. It's not listening. But if you have voice command in your Apple TV or your Apple iPhone or your Google vo uh, phone or your any of these devices, and we have more and more of them do, that's what's going on. It's not sending everything you say back. That would be inefficient and irresponsible. It's just listening. For, even that's the wrong word. It's, it's just looking for a pattern in the sounds it's hearing that it interprets as me. Oh, me. You want me? Yeah. Is that less scary now if I say it that way? Sure. No, you still think you it's creepy. You comforted me. <laughs> no, you still think it's creepy, but you have a smartphone. I have a smartphone. I was creeped out the first time I got my uh, Android and... It had learned my patterns. It knew where I lived. It knew well, yes, and where I worked. It does know and all it that. It told me how long it to get there. And yeah. I said, "How does it know this?" Well, but you can't turn that off. You can. But uh, it's using some intelligent. What again? I, I hate to use these human words for what the machine is doing, but it's noticing. Oh, she sits still for eight hours at this particular location. Then she moves to another location and sits still for 16 hours. One must be home, one must be work. It still confirms it with you. It does. And then once it figures that out, it says, oh, well, you know what? This is usually when she goes home, so let me just maybe see if this is of interest. You know, if you went home now, it'd take you 25 minutes, right? Yeah, Isn't that useful? I also knew when I went to a bar every Saturday, too, so that wasn't good. But it <laughs> is not a human. It is a, a thing. Yeah. It's like a brick knows that. Do you care? No, it's just a brick. I, I'll never, uh, no, I know I won't win this one. Leo Laporte, <laughs> the tech guy. I know this new app monitors earthquakes, and they're using it as sensors. They're using an array of sensors everywhere. It's called MyShake. I think the world will be divided amongst those who think this is great and can't wait. And we'll enjoy the convenience and those who don't want it. But the good news, I guess the good news, is you don't have to have it. You can't have a smartphone without that, right? What's that? HTC Sync Manager. I didn't tell you to launch. Gosh darn you. You must be a kernel extension. I didn't tell you. I didn't. I didn't tell you to launch. I tell you to launch. I didn't tell you that. Search for HT Sync, HTC. Delete everything that has the words HTC in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look in the library for HTC. Oh, yep. Delete that sucker. Don't want www.htc.com. No, I do not. Oi. Look at, all the, look at all the little places this has wormed its way in. That bothers me more than Amazon listening to me. I'm, I'm going to buy one for here. That's what I'm going to do. You know what? I'm doing it right now. An Echo? Yeah. I think this is worth enough worth talking about. Uh... I was going to say, we're I'm all going to be make its name be Amazon. all the time. Yeah, because Echo, Echo's a bad thing. You know how much trouble we've had with Echo. Right? I know. Every time I say the word. Kimmy wouldn't even be here if it wasn't. Well, maybe I won't need her if I, uh, so ship this to Twit. 
We're replacing you with a tube, a black tube with a speaker in it. I love these things. Maybe I'll get two of them. I think there should be one in the gym. I gave myself a Valentine's Day present. I got two Echoes. One for here. Ooh, a protective case. Why? What do you need a protective case for? Oh, but I could put a leopard skin on it. Wait a minute. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> you get I'll, to pick what it looks I, like? Well, this is a third party that sells... Uh, skins or something? Skins <laughs> for your Echo. That is hysterical. I don't even know why one would want that. Oh, look at that. I want a leopard skin case. I'm all about the animal prints. <laughs> well, see, then you can make you don't you don't like a black tube. You feel that's see. I just hide the echo. All right, we should probably do answer some calls. Yeah, that I'm might be nice. So sorry. <laughs> oh, is it going to be like that? Is it? The whole show. The whole show. Uh, actually, I should talk about pill pack. I shouldn't. I shouldn't mess around. I should uh, give some credit to our fine advertisers. This is a pill pack. This is amazing. This is modern technology solving an age-old problem. The problem is, did I take my meds today? <laughs> did, I mean, it doesn't have to be meds. Could, did I take my vitamins this morning? Did I take my uh, antihistamine uh, for allergies this morning? Nobody remembers. And certainly as I get older, I find it harder and harder to remember. And with medication, it's kind of important that you take it. Well, PillPack is a pharmacy that does it the right way. It's a new modern kind of pharmacy. It's an internet-based pharmacy that just, they've, they've solved this whole problem. First of all, it's easy to transfer your prescriptions over. They uh, honor most insurance plans, including most forms of Medicare Part D. And of course, they will make sure that your insurance is compatible before they transfer your prescriptions over. In most cases, you just pay the copay Shipping's free. There's no extra cost. But look what you get. First of all, you get a pharmacist on call 24-7 in the privacy of your own home, not having those conversations. This rash, should I be worrying about that in public? No, you can do it on the, on the phone. But the best part is this box. I just can't, I can't emphasize this enough. So your, your medication comes in these pre-packed little uh, envelopes that say the day, the date, the time, everything you need, what's in there. So you know whether you've taken it or not because the, it's either there or not. If you haven't, you can take it. It's easy to open, by the way. Very easy to open. None of these weird childproof locks. Now, obviously, if you've got kids in the house, you're going to lock this up. But, you know, this for, for elders is great. Why should, why should I be opening a hard to open, especially you know, as you get older, it's harder and harder to open these. They're not childproof; they're 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 adult proof. Your prescriptions are right here on the side of the box. Not not just the description, but the picture of what the pill looks like, exact description, dosing information. Robots pack these, and then they're confirmed in person by a pharmacist. So this is the most accurate way. You'll never take the wrong pill at the wrong time ever again. You'll never miss another pill. Time Magazine called it their top 25 invention of 2015. Jill Duffy, my friend Jill, gave it a great review on PC Magazine. She called it her editor's choice. There's even an app for the iPhone and the Apple Watch. Pill pack, simple, convenient, modern, and so cool. Till you, till you use it, you, you're just not going to... And by the way, they, they work with your doctor to make sure refills are automatic. You don't even have to get online or order again or anything like that. Here's what I want you to do. Go to pillpack.com slash twit. Sign up now. It's a beautiful site, very easy to navigate. You won't just click that get started button. You won't have any trouble. Pillpack.com slash twit. Take you about five minutes. And when you use our link and transfer your prescriptions to Pillpack, you'll get an, a, a credit worth $20 of vitamins or over the counter medication. So simple. And you can call them if you have a question. Pharmacists on call 24 7 too. These guys, it's so brilliant. Pillpack.com slash twit. It's just a better way to take your meds. And if you have a uh, elder in the family, you should turn them on to it. 
seriously, they won't be insulted. They'll thank you. Pillpack.com slash twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. I shouldn't have gotten in this long conversation, I but I did because I worry that people are going to turn away from one of the most useful inventions ever because they're personifying the machines. The machines aren't thinking. Now, there are humans involved at some point, and I, I'm probably it's the case that if you buy a lot of things on your Amazon Echo, Amazon will start offering you more of that kind of thing. So what? Right? All right, Kim. Enough. <laughs> enough. Let's take a phone call. Who, do you, who should I start with? How about here? Dan in L.A.? He needs your help going out with the old and in with the new. I like it. Hi, Dan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. It's Dan. Uh, speaking of getting rid of machines, I'm getting rid of uh, my cable boxes. Yes. Hopefully. And I needed yes. your wonderful advice. On uh, I've been reviewing. I even made a chart of various digital analog converter boxes available. We have you older televisions. Oh, you have older TVs. I was going to say you probably don't. Any modern TV does not need a digital converter. Right. Uh, well, my wife. Here's, here's what I would do. Because you're going to, uh, presumably, you're, are you going to just watch over-the-air television, or are you going to also watch Internet stuff? Uh, Leo, basically over the air, and I might add uh, maybe Netflix. From what I've spoken to people in my area that have done this, they get so many channels, some over 70. Yeah, you don't uh, need cable when you're in a city. Exactamente. So, uh, but you may still want DVR capabilities because you're not going to always be watching live, right? Right. For so, the most part, yeah. Always. Oh, that's the thing that I. Uh, that's the other thing I need your expert advice well, on. Here's what I'm. On. I think I've got an all-in-one solution for you. It's a company called Channel Master at ChannelMaster.com, okay. and it's essentially it's a it's designed for you. <laughs> it's essentially a uh, TiVo for over-the-air broadcast channels got it so okay. it will i'm pretty sure you'll have to look at the bo back of the box but i'm sure they'll have analog outputs for your tv or at least a device that does an analog output right so it hooks up to an antenna they even sell antennas that are suitable for the the frequencies that tv stations are using now indoor and outdoor uh they also sell dvrs they're hard drive you know recorders Mm -hmm. It will act as, in my, I believe, as a di analog to digital converter. It'll pick because it'll take up the over. Uh, or I'm sorry, you want digital analog. It'll take the over the air signal, which nowadays is all digital. And uh, I I want to make sure. Yeah, see, I'm looking at the one box has a HDMI on the back, and that's about it. And that's uh, that's not what we want because that's digital out, and your TVs don't support HDMI yet. But I wonder if they, why wouldn't they? Maybe they do. They sell accessories, sell something that'll let me get the analog out. That's what you need is analog out. Right. Um, or you could buy a new TV. This might be a good <laughs> Well, that's, I'm, I'm trying to get my better half to let me do that. We have a number of them, and at okay, least I so just buy to... Just buy this box and say, oh, dear, it doesn't work with <laughs> TVs. But, uh, Leo, by the way, as you're, as you're doing research for me, I appreciate it. Uh, my, my own research, what confuses me, and you'll probably tell me to ignore it, there are a number of brands out there of digital analog converter boxes, and like anything you buy, a car or whatever, when I go to the review sites that we all know, they're always unhappy campers and I, yeah. I actually did a breakdown of five star four star three star two star one star because it went got so crazy and looked at the percentages of one star versus five star to try to figure out which of good the luck i saw see the problem is a lot all these boxes you're looking at are chinese kind exactly. of oh, now we're getting to the so maybe the heart of the matter. yeah and they're really probably all similar boxes with different looks slightly different looks and that then somebody slaps uh, some american company slaps a label on it and uh, everyone listens to you, Leo. You, you immediately get to the heart of what's important. Well, they're junky. Uh, yeah, and so that's what some of the reviews are. Yeah, they're junky. Um, and, you know, even if you say, well, I'm going to buy RCA, eh, the chances are it's that same Chinese junk. Got and it. they bought the RCA logo, <laughs> they yeah. slapped it on there. So uh, what you need is an a, what's called an ATSC tuner. ATSC tuner. ATSC tuner. Uh, and that is a tuner that will take the current over-the-air digital signals, tune them in, because you need to pick a channel. Uh, and you'll also have to have an antenna. I presume you either have one or you're thinking about getting one. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning toward uh, the Mohu, M-O-H-U. Okay. I amplified and have, I yeah. have a guy that can put it on. Uh, I never should have gotten rid of, the, of course, our old antenna, which everyone is kicking couple themselves of, in. I'm going to give you a couple of sites you should do your research on. One is antennaweb.org. That's put together by broadcasters and the Consumer Electronics Association. You enter your zip code. It knows what signals you can get. It's a great site. I, I oh, you know I, about it. All right. I, well, I did a lot of research. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It's, it's an amazing site. Uh, and then uh, another one is TV Fool. <laughs> great name. TV Fool, uh, if I mention the full URL, it'll immediately cl collapse because it's not designed for a lot of traffic. I think somebody's okay. just doing it uh, for, for fun. But it has a lot of information that's very useful. Great. I'll try. Very I'm not useful. sure with or not. Great. And then, and then you need this, um, you know, uh, to get the over-the-air signals. It's no longer NTSC. It's ATSC. Got it. And you need an ATSC tuner. You're not worrying about cable anymore, so you don't have to worry about QAM or any of that stuff. Um, so let me think. Uh, where would we get the best? Because I, I really love these uh, channel masters. There's another one called um, HD Home Run. I, I would really think that Channel Master would have some solution because you can't be the only person doing this. Oh, no, as you know better than I, this is becoming quite the thing now. I mean, especially yeah. since uh, my provider was nice enough to, again, raise my... Uh, I'm going to be hitting 100 soon just for for uh, the television hookup, and I'm ready to r raise the flag and say, stop. I know, I know. Yeah, you know it's funny. I'm see, I'm looking at an RCA branded ATSC tuner, <laughs> uh, and I and I shouldn't say that this is not good or it's made in China because I don't know. But I do know that General Electric sold the RCA brand off, and it is no longer the huh. Radio Corporation of America. Um, it's called the Really Chinese uh, Association or something. I don't know what it stands for. But, but you hit it on the head, though, Leo. I spoke to an old-time TV guy, and he mentioned a name that I, I don't have it on my laptop as I'm talking to you. And I, I looked at the reviews, and they, there were still people there, you know, saying it's a piece of that and whatever. Yeah. And people loved it, so it probably also was made in China. Everything. Well, that's just where everything's made, though. The TV is made in China. The Everything is. I mean, that's not that's not a knock on it. That's the that's the manufacturing, you know, that's the factory of the world. Um, the problem more is that these are such generic, this is a generic product. And you can see a brand on it, but that doesn't mean anything. It's the same few boxes, different well, brands. Well, go to channelmaster.com, like, like you said. No. I would check out what they've got. Now, of course, a lot of companies makes, make things that are designed for use with computers, but I don't think you, it sounds like you don't want to do that. I'm tr I yeah I mean I prefer I'm uh, I'm excited about going over the air. There's a cost savings. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize how many channels. channels yeah, there's I no reason not to go over the air. And then if you get something like a Roku for internet TV, you're kind of golden. The real issue is these old TVs you've got, and we we have to find stuff with analog outputs. You know, compositor component outputs you can use. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So what I I think the ideal thing to do is probably pretend you've got an HD TV. You know, just just say, you know, I got an HD TV and buy all the stuff that has an HDMI out, the digital out. And then what you just need to do for the time that you continue to use these junky TVs, <laughs> these old TVs, cuz they're not going to give you the best picture, is is buy something that's HDMI to analog. In other words, a converter box that will take... Because all the best new stuff, like the Channel Masters and the TiVo, these are all made for HD TVs. Okay. So what... And you're going to eventually... You're going to get an HD TV. You don't want to scrap everything. Listen, the price... As you know, the, the price... I can go down the street and, and the prices are, you know, so low now. Exactly. I just have to convince my you're wife... You're going to get an HD TV within a year. So why do everything analog? So what I would do is do digital... Uh, you know, which means a Roku with HDMI out, which means a Channel Master with HDMI out. That'll that you know the Roku hooks to your internet, the Channel Master hooks to your antenna. Now you've got everything over the air, so you get all the live broadcasts you could want. You've got every and you can DVR them. The Roku gives you everything on the internet, 
So you you have all the stuff you want, commercial free, whatever you want to see. And then go to monoprice.com, which is a okay. good site for this stuff. Monoprice. Monoprice.com and look for an HDMI. You have to look at what your TVs can get in the order of quality. The best is component. That's where you have the R, the red, green, and blue RCA yeah, jacks. Right. If you have that, that's the best. Next best is S video. The next best after that is component or composite rather. So you want component S video composite in that order. All the sets have the uh, component. Yeah, they all right. have that, and they get pretty clear pictures. I, you yeah. know, when I go to Best Buy, I'm aware that it's a it's a better picture, but it hasn't been enough of oh, a better components. Picture. Components fine. So now you want to get an HDMI to component converter for each of the digital units you're going to use and each TV actually each TV and uh, they're 50 bucks right oh that's great HDMI to component converter yep. okay and then so they what they're going to do is take that digital signal and they're going to turn it into an analog signal terrific which works with your TV exactly and right. then and then uh, you don't that goes with the TV <laughs> And so when you throw the TV out, you throw it out, but you get to uh, keep all that other stuff. Got it. Which you want to keep. Uh, this is a great solution because uh, I'm, I'm almost there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just getting so tired of what we're paying. It's crazy. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I don't have to tell you. It's been on the news. I read some tech magazine. There are major changes coming. Uh, cable companies know this. AT&T. <clears throat> we're in L.A., we have a number of them, and they know very well. They probably have plans, in effect, to cut the price uh, in half already. And I'm going to wave in front of them. A, uh, we always get these notices where they offer prices half what we pay for the first year. Yeah, it's crazy. But I appreciate your words of wisdom. I always listen to you, and this is just a situation. Where I went to your site. I tried to see if there was information on it. Uh, I'm just I'm it, looking. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm ho I'm sure somebody makes a HDMI to component digital to analog converter and that would be the best way to go well you uh, hit it on the head because there's some units that have the uh, recording uh, capability but they're all going to be a digital out HDMI out that's the okay. problem so um, let me just you know I may I don't want to as long as we, I still get you on the phone I got well I only have 26 seconds left but HDMI to component. Converters are more expensive because they're active. They're not just, you know. Okay. Yeah, Newegg sells one uh, for, let's see, 35 bucks. 1080p huh. HDMI to component video for HDTV monitor. Yeah, there's a lot of companies that sell these things. I'll check that area yeah. out. I've, you know, I, I have all the stuff on Mediasonic, Tyvax, View TV, yeah. but they all have some. And that thing doesn't have to be great. It's not, it's not doing much. Well. All right, got to run. Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some good songs thanks to musical director Nathan Staten playing the love songs. All love songs. 8888-ASK-LEO. So I stayed on the line a little bit with our caller just because I wanted to I get narrow this down. And I think the best thing to do, he probably isn't alone. He's got the old school TVs. Remember when uh, most broadcast stations were required by the FCC to convert their signals from analog to digital. It's a big deal. They called it the, you know, the, the end of the world, some people. And in fact, the U.S. government even offered subsidized converter boxes so you could continue to use your old analog TV with these new digital signals. And the reason the FCC did this is they wanted to reclaim those airwaves. Analog is wasteful. It uses up a lot of band, a lot of band. And so uh, the FCC said, we got better uses for this uh, low frequency, relatively low frequency bandwidth spectrum, the 700 megahertz spectrum. So we're going to take you off of that, put you on a different spectrum and ask you to be digital so it's more efficient. But it was a bit of an upheaval, less so now, but at the time, because people had older TVs and they had to get converter boxes to work with the new signals. By the way, there's a new auction coming up for the 600 megahertz band. These The phone companies are dying for these frequencies because it goes through walls, it goes long distances. The lower the frequency, the better it propagates. Higher frequencies up to the microwave. That's why you can have a microwave oven. Lots of energy in that microwave oven, but there's such high frequency 
such at gigahertz frequencies that they don't they can't go through the metal screens on the door of the oven. They can't hurt you. A low frequency you can go right through that <laughs> lower frequency. So these lower frequencies are at a premium for for cell phones and, and TV for anything that needs to go through walls. And the FCC is in effect reclaimed them and is reselling these frequencies to people who can use them better. And uh, so we we've gone through this digital transition a few years ago. And the truth is, and I, this is what I told our caller, you're going to get rid of those analog TVs sooner than later. Because new TVs are inexpensive, they do a better job, you're going to replace them. So don't spend a lot of money on an analog setup. Don't buy a converter box. What you should do is go digital on your tuners, on your antennas, do everything digital. You're going to pick up the signal, you're going to use a channel master to record it, do all of those things. And then each TV needs a digital to analog converter just for the TV so it'll continue to work. Then when you pull out that TV and you put a digital TV in there, you throw out the box too, the converter box. And now you don't have to throw out the whole setup. You know, your recorders, your, your Roku, whatever you're using, those all continue to work. You just needed an adapter for the TV to make the TV work with them. And I think that that will probably be a good short-term solution until he can convince his significant other to let him buy better TVs. That's probably the way to do it. Susan in Longmont, Colorado, you're next. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Hey, um, Susan. I love watching you, and um, I just had a quick comment. Thank you. Um, I was hoping that uh, you could make a promise to women out there that when you uh, talk about uh, people needing to find a local tech person that you use the term guys and gals. There's a lot of us out there, and when I hear you say, look for that curmudgeon that might be wearing, you well, know, you know a uh, that is a, I'm painting a picture of a caricature that is obviously not universal. We have in this language kind of, I'm, I, we, I realize we have a pronoun problem. Uh, there's a generic pronoun. It happens to be masculine, but it's a generic pronoun. I'm not going to say H slash S H E or S slash H E because this is not print. And I'm not going to say he or she all the time. I, I acknowledge that there are women, absolutely many women, not as many as there should be, unfortunately, because men are creeps uh, who are technically excellent and great. In fact, there was just a study. It was really interesting. Somebody looked at all the uh, contributions to a well-known programming site called GitHub. And these are contributions to open source projects. And open source projects that were contributed by women were accepted by the creators of the projects at a much higher rate than men, but only if the women didn't declare gender. So if the woman was using an obviously female name or their description said, I'm a woman... They got accepted at a lower rate. But if it was just based on their programming skills, they got accepted at a higher rate. So your point is well taken. Uh, women are, are discriminated against in technology, and I agree with you. But we also, I mean, this language discriminates against you, and I, it's difficult to do he or she every single time. Obviously, there, there are great tech people who are not wearing wife beaters and smoking cigarettes. That was a caricature I drew just for humorous benefit. And I will, from now on, try to mention attractive females or something. I don't know. What would the female tech be wearing? <laughs> I, you know, I don't have that caricature in my mind. We, we can work on it. But it's just well, a caricature. You're, abs it. you're absolutely right, Susan. And, and what's sad is that uh, women have a lot to offer in life and in their areas technology is one of them where they're not often not welcome and that's a shame but there's a sad side effect of that which is a lot of our software uh is is uh, masculine centric uh, a lot of the ways we do things is male centric because there just aren't enough are you know there aren't women designing this stuff that's starting to change i hope it changes i don't i don't know exactly where we change it but maybe i can help by using my language better so your point is well taken i apologize not just to the women but to the male techs that caricature was a joke, not intended to reflect all male texts. Well, I appreciate your time, and uh, you have a happy Valentine's Day. And I'm, I'm glad. Thank you, Susan. I'm really glad you brought that up, though. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. Take care. Yeah, point well taken. We don't, we don't want to discourage young women. I certainly do encourage uh, young women to get into tech, uh, even though it's sometimes a hostile environment. My wife, uh, who runs my business, is our CEO, uh, worked in years in, for years in construction. Another, another area where <laughs> women have to work a little harder to be accepted, frankly. Um, and it's a shame because I think women in any workplace uh, make a big difference. They're, you know, the, it's really important to bring them in, and especially in an area like technology where the software and hardware we're designing is going to change, the, is changing the world. Let's not, let's change it in a positive way. So I think that point well taken. But also, I'm not going to say he or she every time. You'll have to understand when I talk about humans, it's humans too. It's both humans and humans. It's both of them. 51% <laughs> of the universe is women. So we got to, you know, we got to make sure we don't, uh, don't, are not, are inclusive, right? Emily in our chat room, Emily the Strange in our chat room says she was literally the only girl in her computer science class in university. And we got to change that. That's just bad for everybody. That's not good. So I, I'm, I am totally in agreement with you, Susan. I apologize if I gave the impression that this is in any respect a man's world. Uh, well, it is, but <laughs> let's change that, shall we? 8888-ASK-LEO. The website is techguylabs.com. And more of your calls are coming up in just a bit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I know, I can't wait. I am a convert convert to the Samsung T1 and when the T3 comes out with two terabytes and a USB-C connection, I will buy one of them as well. One of those, one of it. I will buy that as well. Um, they is wrong. See, that's the problem. They is plural when you're looking for a singular pronoun. There's no good uh, singular pronoun that denotes both male and female. It doesn't in the English language. There's nothing. They is is just grammatically incorrect. I refuse to do that. I mean, we got it. You gotta. You gotta. We can't cure the language overnight. In in writing, you could do s slash h e. I always think that was ugly, but I refuse to say, you know, they, when it's a singular pronoun. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. And no one is more in favor of, uh, of women in technology than I am. My business is run by women. <laughs> my wife is a woman. One would hope. <laughs> my sister is a woman. My mother is a woman. Uh, I, I'm, you know, and I know many, uh, well, I wish I knew more, but I, you know, Colleen, our first engineer, was amazing. She was the best engineer I've ever worked with. She was mind-boggling. Uh, so I don't, I'm not, I, I, I totally acknowledge that, that there are great women in technology. We need more of them. But believe me, don't take it too personally when I say, you know, the guy with a cigarette and a white beater in the back of the club with a fly spec stuff. That's a, that's a caricature, a portrait of a person. Not all techs do that. If I were a male tech, I'd be offended by that too. So this is the, uh, this is the T1. I really like this sucker. So what I've, went back and forth on the encryption on it. So Samsung provides uh, encryption on it. And of course, if you're carrying around a terabyte of your personal data in something that you could so easily lose, probably a good idea to have strong encryption on it. And the Samsung encryption is fine, frankly. You do need a special driver for Macintosh, but that's, uh, frankly, Apple's fault for not uh, supporting third-party SSDs very well. So I can't really fault Samsung for that. And 360 is a lot, but you can get, of course, a smaller capacity. I think 360 for a terabyte is remarkable for a high-quality SSD. And it's very fast. And so I keep my documents on, uh, on there. Is Guy non-gender specific? No. Guy isn't either. I'm a tech guy. And if I were a woman, I'd call myself the tech gal, which is fine. But three, two terabytes in that? Wow. 
You can use it on a startup as a startup drive, absolutely, as long as your uh, device supports starting up from USB. Now, some Windows machines have uh, you know won't let you boot from a USB device without turning off some of the security. So, I'm a tech person. Yeah, Leo Laporte, the tech person. That's that has a ring to it. <laughs> it's okay to have a gender, right? I mean, I. <laughs> Now this is the uh, the Type C cable I bought for it. Let me get the Type uh, Type. What is that? Type A. Now I don't think this will mount on this because I need to buy a driver for Windows because I formatted HFS. No, I can't tell Creamy Corn Cob if you're a guy by your handle, but I can definitely tell by the things you say that you're a guy. Well, that's my guess. I don't know. I don't assume anybody's a guy or a gal in chat. I don't assume Emily's a gal or a guy or anything. They're just who they are. They're just them. They're a carbon-based life form. That's exactly right. Installing device. Please wait while setup installs necessary files. So even on uh, Windows, this Samsung installs uh, some software. I like that. I'm going to call myself the tech carbon-based life form. There are many genders. I think I don't. I don't have a. I'm not attached to uh, any particular. I'm gender fluid. Be what you want to be. Be who you. Be what you. Who you are. Yeah. See now. I don't see. I don't think the drive got mounted. Probably because it's HFS. So there are um, programs for Windows. Windows HFS Plus driver. Oh, Paragon, that's right. And isn't there an open source? What do you guys use for reading? Uh, yeah, these Samsungs, these are the EVO, uh, this is the EVO 850. This is, like, the best. Yeah, I, I yeah. So this allow under Windows 8, <laughs> come on, Paragon, you couldn't update this for Windows 10? Oh, wait a minute, here it is. Now fully compatible. I had twenty bucks. I'm willing to pay twenty bucks for this. I thought there was like a fuse or something that would let me use. Uh, is there a free? Uh, let me see. I don't want to be too cheap. Free HFS Plus for Windows. But that's only for Windows 8, which is an interesting business choice. Ah, HFS Explorer. That's in Java. Ooh. A Paragon. Mac Drive, that's the other one. But boy, that's more expensive. Or just format it. <laughs> well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the carbon tech, carbon-based life form. Time to talk about computers <laughs> and the Internet. That's really geeky. I am the tech, carbon-based life form. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. 888 Six eight two seven five five three six. It's an eight 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 number. That means it's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. If you're calling outside that area, you can use. Don't call collect. No, we won't accept that. But you can use Skype. That'll work, and that that'll be free for you. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. Ron is in North Carolina. Hi, Ron. Hey, Leo. Uh, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, happy Valentine's Day. More to the point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm tending to my wife. She's been in the hospital and oh. all. And, uh, yeah, she had to have some surgery. So while I was waiting, um, this should be a Star Trek show. I know. With, with, with everything you've said, you know, with the echo and, and the carbon-based We life. live in an interesting time. 
Hey, but we, we, do? we forget it sometimes because it, it crept up on us so gradual like. <laughs> Yeah, Star Wars has got nothing on us. I know. We even have we even have the holodeck coming from Microsoft. And uh, and in fact, when my wife was in having surgery, they used additional wireless enhanced sensors to monitor wow. her blood flow and things like wow. that. So that was yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, even but, MedTech, uh, especially MedTech, is get is taking some very interesting turns. I think we're on the verge. I hope. Uh, of uh, uh, being able to find solutions genetically tailored to each and one of us, each and every one of us, particularly for cancer. This is a cancer isn't a single issue; it's a variety of things, and the only way to cure it is to have medicines that are tailored for your genes, but the best way anyway. And I think that we're getting there. And anyway, I don't mean to go down that rabbit hole, but I hope you take care of your wife on Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, she, she's she's on the man. She's doing great. Good. I've, got her, Good. I've got her plowing the back forty on Monday. Yeah. Good. Well, <laughs> hey, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, the, the, re the, the reason my call was uh, listening to you and Paul and Mary Jo um, this week, um, and the shock of Mary Jo possibly jumping ship. Our Windows Weekly show. Uh, one of our hosts, who for years has used a Windows phone, because that's her beat, was actually trying an Android device. <gasps> and and I am one. I am one of the one percent, and I've got a Nokia nine twenty. And I was not wanting to go to the um, Apple route. I unless don't blame, I, well, either way, I don't blame you for thinking about leaving uh, Android, uh, leaving Windows Phone. And what I told Mary Jo is the best Microsoft apps for mobile aren't on Windows Phone. They're on iPhone and Android. Mm -hmm. Microsoft's doing all of its best work for iPhone. So I was just curious on the Android side. Was is the Nexus the, the proper phone or? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, you know the nice thing about Android is you have a lot of choices. Uh, you know, obviously, an iPhone is only available from Apple, and even though there are other Windows phones, generally we're buying them from Microsoft now because they bought Nokia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not exactly the same environment. It's similar though. I mean, Google makes the purest expression of an Android device. There are features that other manufacturers offer. Samsung, for instance, has better screens because they make them. They have, a, on their notes, they have a stylus, which some people find wonderful. If you're the type of person that likes to take written notes or draw pictures, a Samsung Galaxy Note 5 would be a fantastic choice. But for pure Android, uh, I think in many ways for uh, the best hardware. I really like the Nexus 6P. That's the that's. I carry two phones, one Android, one iOS, and the, my Android choice is the 6P. Okay. Well, I being on AT and T, I will look that up and. Um... Yeah, and they're, and they're they're not as expensive as the Samsungs. Now remember, we're about to enter the new season, <laughs> the new phone season. Yeah, that, that, that's true. That's coming up. Yeah, so uh, we're going to see the new uh, Samsung Galaxy S7 uh, on March, I'm sorry, February 21st, a couple of weeks, one week from today. Uh, we are going to see uh, new LG, the G5, roughly the same time, I think one week from today. There's an interesting phone that's 350 bucks. Uh, it'll be hard to get. They're having trouble making enough of them called the Robin. That's coming out on Wednesday. The Robin's interesting because it's inexpensive, um, but it's a very nice phone. I'll get, I'll have one. I, I it was a Kickstarter, and I, uh, I kickstarted it, so I'll be getting mine on the 16th. I'll let you know next weekend what I think of that one. But I, I still think the best bang for your buck, and and the cleanest phone, and certainly the one that's going to get the fastest updates, and that's important in the Android world, is the Nexus, and the Nexus 6P is my favorite of the two they offer. Okay, well, I will check that out. Thanks for the call, and thanks for listening to Windows Weekly, by the way. If you're really into Windows, that is a, boy, is that a good show. And I don't take any credit for it, because it's, it's my co-hosts, Paul Therott and uh, Mary Jo Foley, who are full-time Microsoft watchers. And we get some great, we got the, uh, the chief marketing officer of Microsoft came on and answered questions kind of within a forthright, honest manner, which stunned me just a few weeks ago. Chris Capicella, that was amazing. So these, these guys uh, really know what they're talking about if you're into Windows. Uh, all of our podcasts are on the TWIT network, T-W-I-T. This Week in Tech is what it stands for. Including this show, we have a podcast of this show too, at TWIT.TV. That's the website. Uh, moving on to Bruce in Huntington Beach. Hi, Bruce. Good afternoon, Leo. 
About, Afternoon to uh, you. About a month or six weeks ago, I started getting robocalls on my cell phone. And they're uh, they oh. come in, they come in uh, two or three a day yeah. and uh, from all over the country. I hate them. <laughs> I, get, I get, hi, pause. We've just, did, according, can I, the new federal law means you can refinance your home at a low cost, pause. Or your car insurance is about to expire. Pause. The problem with these, first of all, they're robocalls, so you can't say, put me on your do not call list. Now, if you wait until a human comes on, because eventually a human comes on, you can say that. The question is whether they'll honor it. And because they aren't really coming from the inside the United States, in many cases, they won't. Well, what I do is I just don't answer them. Yeah, I don't either. If and I don't recognize the number, a message. I, I wonder if that's the best tactic. And they never leave a message, or if they do, they leave like the first ten seconds, and then because <laughs> they're robots. So yeah, I don't know what the best tactic is. You no, know, here's a couple of things you should know. It's illegal to make uh, commercial calls to cell phones because it costs you as much as it costs me, right? Minutes or minutes, whether it's incoming or outgoing. So the so it's against the law to do that. So all you have to do, if it's a re reputable telemarketer, is say, this is a cell phone. Do not call it. And they are supposed to take that number off their list. The problem really is this doesn't work Be <laughs> because people don't honor the list. They're outside the country, so they're above the law. Or they're calling random numbers. They don't even, you know, they don't even know. They don't have a list. So uh, it's a shame. It's really a shame. And I don't know what the answer to it is except, yeah, have caller ID on. And if you don't recognize the number, don't answer it. That's what I do. The thing that's frustrating is my doctor blocks caller ID when he calls. So it's always an unknown caller. I don't want to hear from him anyway. <laughs> it's, it isn't a perfect solution, but I'm with you. And I don't know the answer. And, you know, as we enter the political season, it's only going to get worse. Fortunately, because we're in California, everybody's given up on us. So we don't get the robocalls. But I bet if you're in South Carolina right now, your phone is ringing off the hook. Probably so. Yep. Hey, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for calling, Bruce. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is a, you know, you're not, <laughs> it's against the law to send you unsolicited faxes or to call unsolicited calls uh, to your cell number because in both cases it costs you money. But go ahead and try and get that enforced. <sighs> I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. I, I really love the idea that uh, I can just look at the number and I just won't answer it unless I recognize it. And that's pretty much... And my, because my phone number is public, I even put it in the signature to my email, so everybody has it. So I probably more than anybody get calls all the time. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, ain't going to answer it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that was a great story. The robot telemarketer who said, no, I'm not a robot. <laughs> well, if you're not a robot, tell me you're not a robot. I'm not a robot. <laughs> is the recording on there, Jerry? Because that was a great... That was a fun one. Hey, our show today brought to you by my printers. I talk a lot about the Epsons, I know. This is the actual advertising portion of the, of the show. The Epson EcoTank printer. Uh, we got one for um, Lisa. Because uh, I've always had the Precision Core printers in my office at home. And Lisa said, I need, my, I need an EcoTank. So we got the ET4550. Nice. It was fun. It was very easy to set up. And it comes, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a regular precision core, you know, regular. <laughs> These are the state-of-the-art printers, 40 million drops per second. Beautiful, crisp black and white text, vivid colors, two-sided printing automatically if you want. I, do, I use that to save paper. 30-page auto document feeder that actually works. You can print from your laptop, but you can also print, you know, over Wi-Fi from your tablet, from your phone. It supports all the protocols like Apple's AirPrint, Google Cloud Print. Just love it. But here's the fun thing. See that tank on the side there? That's an ink tank. So when we opened the box, it's got it's got four bottles of ink in there. And I it was easy. I just loaded up the tank and boom, that's that's now eighty five hundred color pages, eleven thousand black and white pages, the equivalent of fifty ink cartridges. Fifty. That's about two years of printing in the box. And when you run out of ink, eventually. You just go out and buy more bottles at a very low cost. It's low cost. It's efficient. They have ink packs for the big printers because they also do office, you know, and work group printers. Epson, 
such great printers. And now they've given you, and they, by the way, they still make my, my Precision Core workforce with the ink cartridges. So for low, light duty, still a good choice. Still a good choice. But if you don't like being interrupted in the middle of a print job, if you don't want to go get cartridges, if you want to save money on ink, you got to check it out. Epson.com slash Ecotank. E-P-S-O-N dot com slash Ecotank. An unbeatable combination of convenience and value. Epson, exceed your vision. Do you think Rick Astley like looks at Rick Rowling as a, a windfall for him? He must make money every time somebody clicks that link, right? And the song plays, never going to give you up. And then he must make a penny or something. He's probably a millionaire thanks to Rick Rowling. Anybody wants to Leo roll you? Just please, Leo roll. It's good. It's the oh, new thing. Leo. It's All the kids are doing it, the Leo roll. 80, I wish. 8888 ask Leo. That's the number. I, but I don't have a song and I wouldn't get royalties. So never mind. Do Rick. Scott's on the line from Jasper, Georgia. Hey, Scott. Hey, Leo. How you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your wife. Thank you so much. Um, I got a, a question uh, that may seem a little bit out of the ordinary, but um, I just set up my first GoFundMe campaign to help me raise money for bariatric surgery. I'm a, I'm a morbidly obese person who needs surgery to, to help to live better. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And um, I'm just curious what your opinion is on uh, GoFundMe and this type of... Oh, come on. I know what you want. Give me the, give me the link. <laughs> <laughs> come I mean, on. I'm not that stupid. Do I look that I know stupid? No, you're not. I know you're not. I'm, I'm using no, you. No, I, I love... That's all right. Use me, man. Use me. Uh, uh, I love this idea. The actual link, but if you just go to GoFundMe.com and search for Scott's Weight Loss Journey, there you go. I like it. Now, um, on something like this, of course, it's going to work better with people who know you. Absolutely, and, and and I have uh, it's like a week old, and I, I you know I did very well just getting it um, through my family and friends on Facebook. I think that's a good way to do it. Spread it viral right now. So I'm just yeah. uh, I'm, I'm doing what I can, you know, with LinkedIn and and all the social networks. But I said uh, to myself, hmm, let me call Leo. Uh, Leo's got a radio show that <laughs> I, love. I listen to religiously. I uh, love it. Um, so the GoFundMe is uh, a crowdfunding site, yeah. and there's actually a number of these. Uh, of course, Kickstarter is well known. Yeah. Kickstarter is yeah. not appropriate for what you want to do. GoFundMe is much better for that. And there are other sites like that where people can make appeal, personal appeals, saying, "Hey, I'd like to do this. I need, uh, you know, I need to do this, or I need surgery, or whatever." And you can make personal appeals. And I think this is uh, it's certainly worth a try. It's a great idea. There are. Um, ways to do this you can set it up so that you don't get any money unless you reach a certain threshold go that's how kickstarter generally works gofundme has an option to say hey whatever i get i'm gonna i'm gonna get you're gonna be actually uh, yeah, the only thing i worry about with this type of thing leo is, is scammers out there that that um uh will be i guess the term would be digital panhandlers and i worry that it's going to get a bad reputation well there will be some of that mm -hmm. uh there will be some of that and um I, I, you know, people often ask me to retweet these kinds of things, right. and I don't for that reason, because mm -hmm. I don't have the time to vet these proposals and to say, oh, is it real or not, or is it just somebody looking for a handout? I Obviously, you're not, and I trust you, but it's just, it's impossible when people tweet me and say, could you retweet? And they often have, you know, great stories. Yeah, yeah my, the way that I'm trying to handle this is being as forthright as I can, as honest I can, as That's I great. can, and uh, just you know, giving uh, consistent updates uh, throughout the process. Yeah, this was a tough decision for me to make to actually have this surgery, but as uh, someone who's uh, how much does it cost? Oh, good lord, it's about uh, uh, I've been told about twenty thousand dollars. And insurance does not cover it. Uh, it will. I'm I'm uh, I'm blind. I'm on Medicare, so it covers eighty percent, and I'm just looking to. Uh, you don't need that much then, because you, you no, only no, need no, the twenty percent. I set the goal at four thousand dollars, and we're just a Good. little over twenty five hundred. Good. And uh, I just want to be able to handle the out of pocket cost that they're going to come up because of, uh, because of it. And uh, but I'm really excited about it because the the possibilities 
for someone uh, like myself, and I, I want to be a motivation for others. Good. Yeah, make do. That's I think one piece of advice I'd have for anybody who wants to do this: make it more than just uh, asking for a handout. Uh, have a plan around it. Say, I want to write a book, or I'm gonna I'm gonna do public speaking. This is you know, if, if my life will change, I think that's great. Uh, so Scott's weight loss journey on GoFundMe.com. There's another uh, crowdsourcing site that I love. A friend of mine actually started it called Patreon. Uh, you know, this all kind of is like patronage, isn't it? Remember the, the days of the Medici emperors, the popes, where they, you know, Michelangelo painted a, the Sistine ceiling because some rich guy, was it who was it, Leonardo de Medici? I can't remember who it was, but anyway, Lorenzo de Medici gave him money and said paint that ceiling the pope paint that ceiling and uh and so he did and we have a great work of art because of the patronage of a wealthy man or woman uh well this kind of the modern age patreon does the same thing but instead of a sistine ceiling it could be a painting a book any creative act a lot, in a lot of cases it's a podcast somebody wants to make a podcast a number of my friends uh, are using this as a way to fund their uh, their programming their podcasts. And if you enjoy the show, you say, I'm going to give a buck for every time I hear the show or listen to the show or whatever that is. And uh, I love this idea. Going directly to your uh, audience, to your supporters. More and more artists uh, like musicians and photographers are doing this too. I think it's a, it's a really interesting uh, way. It's not the only way, obviously, uh, but it's, a, it's nice to have some alternatives. And uh, I support it. Now, I support... A lot of things on Kickstarter I probably shouldn't support. <laughs> and I, I also want to point that out, that, that, that uh, Kickstarter is very clear about this. We are not a store. I think people sometimes go to Kickstarter and say, that's cool. For instance, I just put down a significant amount of money. I think it was like 100 bucks on a floating bonsai tree. Now, that was dumb of me. And I, of course, regret it. But... <laughs> It was cool. So there was a base with, I guess, a big magnet in it. And then the, the tree had, was in a, uh, a root ball, had a magnet in it, and it repelled it, and the tree would float. And I just thought that looks kind of cool. You're never going to get this bonsai Never going to see a floating bonsai <laughs> tree. I'm probably not. And, that, and there are more than a few Kickstarter projects that I've kicked into. But that now, means you don't have to pay, right? Depends. There are some that I've kicked into that have made the amount they were asking for. And still didn't deliver. And that can happen. That's my that's the point I'm making here. It, you, a, you're not, it's not a store. You're not buying a product. You're giving money to a company in support of the idea, hoping that you might get something at the end of the line. And B, you're not an investor. You aren't going to, if the company makes a lot of money, and the best example of this is Oculus Rift, the VR headset, I kicked in. A couple hundred bucks, I think, for an Oculus Rift. I got the Oculus Rift. They said it's going to just be a development kit. It's very early. I know. But I think virtual reality is interesting. A couple of years later, after we all kicked in money to Oculus, they sold out to Facebook for billions of dollars. Do I see any of that? No, because I'm not investing in them. I gave them money. And I happened to get a a, 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 a visor, but I might not have. That's There's no guarantee. So that's just something to be aware of. You're you're neither investing nor buying. You're you're donating on these sites. It's a donation with no guarantees. If you like the idea and you feel like, hey, this really needs to be supported, and if I, you know, I've talked to the folks at NASA. I said you should do some of the, some crowdfunding for some NASA projects because a lot of us support space exploration better than Congress. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. No more than a of a racket than the lottery. And the likelihood of a payout is higher than the lottery. <laughs> but I don't buy lottery tickets, but I do spend money on Kickstarter. I always like to check in on Kickstarter and see how my projects are going. Let's just see my backed projects on Kickstarter. Then we're going to get Chris Marquardt. Whoops. Verify my password. Well, if you insist. Okay. <whistles> oh, I guess I do. I not have. I do not have the uh, app installed. Oh, hey, hey. 
Hey, hey, Chris Marquardt, how are you today? Hello, how are you? I'm very, very well. What are we gonna, what are we gonna do today? We'll talk about uh, well, so something that either you or someone else alluded to uh, last week was um, how to shoot pictures of people. Yeah, that was me. That was you. And there, there are like lots of different angles. So I want like, to. Shoot. I think we will we'll make this into a multi-part thing. I, I, I just, I'm always embarrassed and. But this is good. I know you. I got it. What I got to do is take one of your uh, workshops. That's what that I got to do. That would make things so much easier. Break By the, the way, um, I'm sure as you do, after you do it, you kind of, you know, it's just the first time or first few times, right? And then you then you get comfortable with it. Maybe not. Of course I, I do. Know. By the way, there, there's there's a thing that just popped in. I have a special offer for Greenland in August 2016. Oh, Seven Greenland is really should be called Iceland. Seven nights in Iceland um, should be called Greenland. On a four mast schooner. <gasps> what the what? Yep. You're yep. doing this? Go to discoverthetoplore.com. I have this on the website. I'm putting the money down. It's it's not even expensive. It's just it just came in and it was a special offer. They will even pay the price for the flight from Iceland to Greenland and back. That's included. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is this is uh, breaking news. Breaking news. This just came in. I actually, after how I comfortable is this four mast schooner? Oh, it's very comfortable. Where's pictures of it? I want pictures. <laughs> you don't have that I, it yet. This just came in. I will. I will provide all the information once it's there. Okay, so August 2016, we'll go for 23rd a week. to 30. 23rd to 30th of August. Of course, you want to go in the summer to Greenland, but there's still ice in Greenland in the summer. Oh, and it's going to be sun at night, and it's going to oh, be... Oh, my God, I want to do this. Sunset all around the clock. Honey, mm -hmm. honey, can I do this, please, honey? Lisa, <laughs> I want to go on the boat. But I only get to take a handful of people. I know. So. Well, you. Oh, so you're not going to take over the whole boat? No, 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 no. It's it's good. It's a maximum of five or six. Oh, is what I'm what I'm gonna take. So. Oh. Yeah. I want to do this, honey. No, I I doubt I doubt I would be able to fill this entire boat. We're going. Not important uh, enough. Of course for that. you could. I could. <laughs> no, I'm not important I enough. I could. For that. <laughs> you could easily. I could. could easy. Um, the problem is we're going on a cruise the next month. <laughs> Uh, to the okay. Baltic, so it's yeah. gonna. Yeah. It says only if she can go. Well, of course she can go. I want her to go. I'm not going alone. You want to go? Here, it's on uh, discoverthetopfloor.com. There's not much. It's kind of scant information. She didn't really enjoy Norway all that much. Oh really? Did the boat rock? Well, Will the boat rock? It's here we go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Not that much. I no, mean, it's very, we're right there. It's we're supposed... in Greenland. Yeah. Oh, how much could it rock? That Kodachrome song can mean but one thing. It's time for our digital photography guru, Mr. Chris Marquart from DiscoverTheTopFloor.com, <laughs> where he is trying and and successfully, I might add, to entice me to a workshop in Greenland in <laughs> August on a sailing boat, a sailboat, a four mast schooner. Yeah, it it did work with a with the Rolla Flex. So I was, you are the devil. Uh -huh. Can I bring the Rolla uh -huh. Flex and the Leica M3, the film cameras? I wouldn't. I would insist on that. I would actually bring film for you. <laughs> you know, after <laughs> shooting a a little bit of film with those cameras, as much as I love those cameras, and then I went back to what I consider the best camera ever, which is my Sony A7R2, yep, forty-two megapixel. Does does the convenience win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the images win. The quality of the image is so yeah. much better. It's like a, a medium format camera. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I would, anyway. I would up, up in Greenland, I would show you how to shoot with a large format camera, and then you'll be hooked. Oh, man. See, this is going to be an expensive <laughs> yeah. trip, even if it's not. <laughs> All right. So, Chris, what do you want to talk about this week? Well, last week you uh, had a question about how to shoot people, and I actually looked into that. Now, we don't say shoot. We say make a photograph. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't how want we, people how to do think we... I'm shooting people. Uh, no, no, we're not. There's <laughs> we're not. a lot of military jargon in, in cameras. You aim, you shoot. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. No, of course, how to take pictures of people. And I, I thought about this, and I thought 
this would be kind of an easy thing to answer in like 10 minutes here. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, wait a minute. Let's a bit more specific. I mean, you could ask questions like how to make people look good in pictures. You could ask something really, really specific, like how to light a portrait, how to make the light good on a portrait. It could also mean how to approach strangers on the street if you want to take a street portrait. Or even something as deep as how to capture real emotion. So I thought these four things, how to make people look good, how to light portraits, how to approach strangers on the street, and how to capture real emotion will make this uh, bits on the next four shows. So today okay, I want to talk about how to make people look good in, in photos, and then next week how to light portraits and so on. I think this is great because so, the best pictures are pictures of people in my opinion. I just love well, looking at Yes, people. absolutely. Absolutely. People, people in pictures always make pictures better. Yeah. That's just almost like a rule of thumb. Because so, we're, built, we're built to look at people. That's our, you know, that's our biology. What's that's the first thing we probably see are the eyes of our mother. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. So how do we make people look good? There, there are kind of a few factors that go into that. Uh, I think what's really important is timing in pictures because people's expressions change a lot and they change quickly. So with and when you see photographers nowadays take pictures with a modern camera of people, they usually shoot a little burst. They shoot like three or four pictures and then they have more choice in did that person close their eyes or did they have a weird angle on their mouth or something? So you can do this even with your smartphone. If you shoot with an iPhone, and I think Androids probably do the same thing, you just hold it down the button on the camera for a bit longer than usual and it'll do a little burst for you. So oh. it takes several pictures oh. in rapid succession. That you can way if they blink or they go, mm, I make a weird face, the next picture... it happens picture, so quickly in does. faces. It is yeah. so quick, yeah. so you really... Sometimes it's this millisecond that makes it better or worse. So, so even if you're using, even if you're not using burst mode, if you're just taking pictures, take more than one picture of a person, right? Absolutely, like in take more than one picture. Yeah. It'll yeah. also it'll also get them used to you taking pictures of them. Um, or if it's the your kids, it'll drive them insane, and they'll never let you take another picture again. To the, the it, to the point <laughs> until they go, eh, okay, let's. They, they'll just give up. Oh, you know? so you wear them down? Is that the trick? Yeah, you wear them down. Then. <laughs> okay, good enough. Okay. Second thing that helps with portraits, or with pictures of people in general, is the focal length. If you have a camera that can change lenses, try a bit of a longer focal length. Ah. If you go all wide angle on people... Oh, it makes people's noses will, huge. Makes them look weird. So <laughs> go, go longer focal lengths. If you have a zoom lens on it, zoom in a bit. That will usually help. Um, so stand farther back phone. then. It also it has the advantage of you're not jammed right in front of them, right? There, there's some, it makes them feel more comfortable because you're not right in their face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes uh, sense. One more thing that is color. Color is important for uh, skin tones. Skin tones are really essential for good pictures of people. You can have weird colors in it, like a blue, bluish cast, if you want a spe specific effect. But usually good skin tones are crucial and that's where you want to go and check the white balance on your camera. That's uh, those little mm -hmm. symbols of like a little, tr a little cloud, a little tungsten bulb, a little fluorescent bulb and so on. So if you choose the right color temperature of the scene that you're under, you will get better skin tones. Good to know. This is good And stuff. last but not least, composition. I mean, especially what's going on behind a person. If you have like a tree growing out of someone's head, it's going to look weird. It will look weird. Um, or a lamppost or something coming out of the shoulder. These are the kind of things that hardly ever work out. So trying to make sure the background is not kind of doing weird things with the, with the foreground. Uh, if you match that up a bit, if you make maybe sidestep a bit and try to get the composition a bit better, uh, that can really, really improve your pictures. Great tips. I really, I love taking pictures of people. I want to be kind of a street photographer and that's just take a little camera and go. And, and the problem is uh, I live in a small town. <laughs> And people, pretty, everyone knows you. Yeah, you get a <laughs> reputation after a while for being a creep. So I have to go to a big city <laughs> and do that. Well, you know, San Francisco is pretty good for that. It's, it's very not that good. Far. Yeah. You've done, you do workshops for this, right? To kind of get people used to taking pictures of people. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I have to take one of these workshops. That's really the truth. Chris uh, is at discoverthetopfloor.com. That's where he does uh, his work, workshops. There's a great podcast, uh, Tips from the Top Floor. Uh, that's how I got to know Chris way back when, like 10 years ago in the early days of podcasting. We've known each other a long time.
Good old times. And uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, if you we have a, a if you want to kind of get encouraged to take more pictures, we have a little assignment every month. Uh, uh, just a, a word, an idea, a topic that you can go out, take pictures around, and then submit them to our Tech Guy group. That's on the uh, Flickr site. That's a free photo sharing site, Flickr.com. And you have to find, you know, search for the Tech Guy group. You'll know you're in it because it's a big group. But it's like, how many members now? 11,000? 12,000. 12,500, 12, 12, yeah. And there's thousands of photos on there. And, uh, and, and so the current assignment is water. Okay, join the group. Renee Silverman, welcome you. And now I want you to take pictures of wa of what that means to you. It might not be of water. might be water-like, watery, water. Just water's the inspiration. No prize here. Uh, it's not a competition. It's just for fun. Although, Chris will be, pick three of the photos he thinks are interesting. Not even the best, but just, you know, worth talking about on the radio. And uh, and we'll mention them and give you, a, you know, a, a little credit for that. Uh, again, Tech Guy Labs. I'm sorry. No, no. Flickr.com and then the Tech Guy Group. And water. Water can be fun to take pictures of. Oh, especially in winter when yeah. it comes in all sorts of... It could be frozen. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm, I'm challenged or by this. Or fog you know what's or... fun to do with water? Just a little something. Uh, time lapse. You know, give it a give it a half second or a second exposure, and the water gets all soft and pretty. Yeah. You need a tripod. Or or, yeah, that's an example. Not something you should do. Just as an example. I haven't done my picture. I haven't. In fact, I'm so bad. I haven't done a picture in a long time. <laughs> I will this time. By the way, it can be with your smartphone. It doesn't, in fact, often we pick uh, pictures people took with their uh, smartphone because it's the camera you have that really counts. Yes. DiscoverTheTopFloor.com. Chris Markware, thank you. We'll talk again next week with, more, with part two of our How to Take Pictures of People. Part of how to light portraits, how to make the light good in portraits. Oh, I got something to show you next week All right. that I got just for that. 8888-ASK-LEO. The website is techguylabs.com. And more of your calls still to come. Another whole hour and 15 minutes of the show left. 888-827-5536. I am Leo Laporte, the carbon-based tech form. Or something. Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Have a, see you again next week. Have a great day and we'll see you. A great week and we'll see you next right. week. Take care. Bye. I am a carbon-based life form, Leo Laporte, or, or an ape man. It's all, you know, or Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the number to call. Musical director Nathan Staten, drifting slightly from the Valentine's love song, but that's okay. That's okay. That's a great, I haven't heard that song in so long. That's a great one. Uh, Steve's on the line from Yucaipa, California. Hi, Steve. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. How are you? Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Hey, um, I got a question about this. Uh, it's called Sophos, S-O-P-H-O-S. Yeah. Antivirus from my uh, my company. Yeah, they're great. They allow, us, they allow us to have the home use program of it since I do work on my home computers. And... Uh, uh, my 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 work laptop or my home laptop, it used to work, and then I tried to install Windows 10, and that turned into a gaggle. Yeah, and uh, tried to revert it back, and it froze my computer. Now, so did you have Sophos install. installed during all of this? I'm sorry, what was Sophos installed at this time? It was. Huh. And it was working. Sometimes and security I, software can cause problems. This is the the negative of of a security software is. Well, it's locking your system down, which means things like installing and upgrading can sometimes be problematic. Yeah. So I guess I found that out the hard way in that uh, I had to basically had to reinstall uh, Windows 7 on my computer. And, and I, so I, I got the disks out. And I, I threw it up, put them on there, and did all the Windows updates that I could, you know, that it needed to do. And I went to reinstall Sophos, and it will, it installs fine. But when I go to update the uh, to update it, if you will, to get the uh, the different antivirus uh, files, it cannot connect to the server. Hey, can but you can get online that. fine, right? Yeah, I'm online fine. And I compare it to my other computer that has Sophos on it, and the web addresses are different. Oh, interesting. Between the two, and I can, and they're both grayed out because they're corp they're controlled you can't change by. Them. Yeah. 
And uh, I spoke with my corporate IT guys, and they're like, well, we don't really do any support for... Yeah, I'm wondering if you're using the right version. You might be using the one that's designed for your office. Make sure you use the home version. Uh, that will call the rights, the, the appropriate server. Yeah. That would yeah. be my guess. Now, let me talk, because the, 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 the antivirus story is very nuanced. So let me talk a little bit about whether you should even use Sophos. Uh, the times have changed. You know, I used to always recommend an antivirus. And, you, and people would say, you'd be crazy to use Windows without an antivirus. But then I noticed a lot of my security guru friends didn't. And if you ask security experts these days, antivirus is usually fairly low on their list of things to do. Top of their list is update your computer and anything that goes online, including your browser, Adobe Reader, PDF Reader, uh, you know, every, anything, Flash, Java, anything that that happens in the browser that happens online must be kept, uh, uh, must be kept assiduously kept up to date. That's really important. Number one. Uh, number two, be very cautious about installing software from unknown sources. You know, don't, you know, if you didn't go out and specifically ask for it and you didn't go to a, you know, and, and by the way, you should be going only to very reliable first party sources, not third party sources for software, but the original creator of the software and places you know, then don't, you know, don't accept soft, you know, like you get a pop up that says, hey, you, my, this is micro, hi, this is, hey, this is Microsoft. I'm calling there. You got a problem. Don't, that's, those are liars. And there's lots of scammers out there. So don't make sure, be very careful. To get, uh, to take over your system, they have to get software installed on it. it. Whatever it is, it requires software to be installed. So don't, unless you're really sure it's safe. And finally, be very careful about phishing scams, clicking on links and email and text messages on Facebook, because they often draw you to a sites that look legit like your bank. I've been getting a text message on my uh, iPhone every day. From Apple, it says, we found your lost iPhone. Now, it happens, my son did lose his iPhone. So I believed it. We found your lost iPhone. Oh, my gosh, click this link. I clicked the link, and then I noticed something. It was Apple.al. That's Albania. Oh, it's it's not Apple.us or Apple.com. It's Apple.albania. And the screen had popped up looked exactly like the iCloud screen. They were trying to get my iCloud credentials. And the funny thing is, of course, you know, because I clicked on that link, now I get that text message every day, and I have to ignore it every day uh, because it's not Apple. And I sent a text to my son who lost his phone. I said, you're going to get this text, maybe. Don't believe it. Because it's tempting to believe it. You go, well, yeah, I did lose my phone. How would anybody know that but Apple? Well, they're sending it to everybody. <laughs> so those are the things. Those are so much more important than your antivirus. And here's what's changed. Viruses spread in minutes worldwide now. Your antivirus, at best, takes days, usually weeks, to get updated. So you're vulnerable for the first, you know, few days of these exploits. In many cases, okay. if you say, I'm going to install software, your antivirus can't block you from installing software. That would make you mad. So the antivirus goes, well, he must know what he's doing. So it doesn't protect you at all. So the anti so it's a nuanced conversation because I don't want to tell people oh just drop your guard, but it isn't the most important thing. In fact, in many cases, it just gives you a false sense of security. You go well, I I can do anything I want. I've got an antivirus. No, you can't. And this there's this side effect, which is that any security software is going to try to block you from doing some things, and that may be why you had all these problems to begin with. So take Sophos off. Okay. You don't need it. Now, Microsoft uh, Windows 10 comes with an antivirus. They, Microsoft calls it Defender. It's essentially the same as the Microsoft Security Essentials free antivirus they've been offering since Windows 7. It, that is much less intrusive. If you if you feel better having an antivirus, and I wouldn't blame you, download that. It's free. It's unobtrusive. It does not get in your way. It does not block stuff, and it's good enough. That's a Windows Defender. Uh, well, in this case, it's called Microsoft because you're using Windows 7. Microsoft.com slash security underscore essentials or Google Microsoft Security Essentials or Bing it. <laughs> and you and it'll go right to that page. It's free, it's okay. it's unobtrusive, it's all you need. Excellent. Excellent, sir. I appreciate your input. Yeah, and I think the Sophos is what caused these problems. Just get it out, get rid of it. It's free, but it I just free's not necessarily <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> free pain in the you know what. 
I'll give you a free kick in the butt. No problem. Free. Okay, I'll take it. It's free. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I, I, this is not an uncommon thing. And I'm glad you gave me the call because I really, it's a hard conversation because you can't just say, oh, get an antivirus or don't get an antivirus. But it's not the most important thing. Keep your system up to date. Don't accept candy from strangers. Those kinds of things are much, much more, more important. Uh, and and in, in some cases, antiviruses actually could give you a virus. They're, these are not unheard of also. I don't want to get in that. All right, we're going to take a break. Hour number three, still to come. Lots of calls. Uh, Steve uh, in Yukaipa, we just did him. So uh, next, it's going to be Den in Fresno. Stay tuned. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah, uh, yes, let's get back to the Tech Guy show in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you're the kind of person who is doing the hiring in your business, that means either you're the owner or a trusted employee like HR person, you know that the people you hire for your business are the people who make or break your business. Businesses, companies are made of people. That's what makes a, a company work or not. So... The sad thing is, of course, that when you're hiring, uh, you're short-staffed, you're short-handed, you're in a hurry. <laughs> and this is the last time, you know, you don't, you don't have the energy, perhaps, or the, uh, or the manpower to, to do the hiring. You want to get it done fast. But you still want to pick a great person. That's why we use and love ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com slash tech guy for more information. ZipRecruiter, okay, the first thing is, you don't have to figure out which job board to post on. You know that perfect employee's out there somewhere. Which job board are they on? I don't know. Well, how about this? You post once to ZipRecruiter, and they put it on 100-plus job boards, including all the big social sites like LinkedIn and Twitter, Facebook. Your, your posting is going to reach everybody, and that's what you want, right? Because you don't know where that right person is. They also will match your listing against nearly 6 million current resumes they have on file. So you're going to get... One post, you're going to get candidates rolling in. Now, a lot of people say, oh, gosh, that means a lot of emails or phone calls. No, it doesn't, because they roll into the ZipRecruiter interface. This is sweet. You can screen the candidates, rate the candidates, and hire the right person fast. This is such a good idea. This is, once again, the Internet showing us how to do it all. No wonder 400,000-plus businesses have used ZipRecruiter, including ours. You could try it now for free. Here's a Scott, a happy ZipRecruiter client. He said, the recruiting process used to be so painful. Uh, previously, I'd post to several places. I'd get a million resumes, but only a few responses from qualified candidates. This was torture. But with ZipRecruiter, we post once. We get qualified candidates in one easy-to-review place. We have hired, I love this, some of our best employees using ZipRecruiter. That's the point. That's the bottom line you got to get the right people to make your company sing. And ZipRecruiter is the way to do it. No wonder. Look at all these great companies who use ZipRecruiter. You should, too. And it's free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash tech guy. Four days free. That'll be enough to get, who knows, hundreds, maybe thousands of qualified candidates in your inbox. Well, your ZipRecruiter interface. ZipRecruiter.com slash tech guy. Try it. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers and the internet and home theater and digital photography. Smartphones. Smart watches. Electric cars. Self-driving vehicles. And all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Den Fresno, you're next. Hi, Den. Hey, Leo. How's it going? Ah, oh, it's going great. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Um, I have a question. I uh, my old all-in-one printer, my Alpha Jet, finally died on me. So I'm looking for a new one. Um, I checked out the wire cutter, and they're recommending the Epson Workforce 3620. Now that's inkjet. Uh, you your Office Jet was laser, right? Or no? No, it was an inkjet. It was an inkjet. Okay. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is that um, I'm blind, and I'm noticing that on a lot of these, yeah. the other ones, they have screens all, now and touch screens. Touch screens. Yeah, That's and so I'm like, okay, how do I, you know? Well, that one even is a combination of those, 
it has, I guess, like a number pad of buttons, but the rest, the actual menu interface part. Right. And, of course, you're not going to get a screen reader on a printer screen. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think, I don't remember if it's Canon or one of those, the ones that do, like, for big offices, they actually do have accessible Isn't that cool? Uh, printers, but they're for big offices. You know, they're, That's probably kind of, due to the ADA, right? That the these offices yeah, say, so. well, we got to have accessibility and we can't buy a printer that doesn't have it. Uh, okay. But it, the ADA doesn't, uh, I guess, govern what the home printer. Uh, no. Unfortunately. Uh, that's a really interesting uh, question. I, You know, unfortunately, I, I don't have the expertise to uh, judge or knowledge of accessibility products because... I've never used them, and so right. you're using a screen reader, I presume, on your desktop computer or laptop, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So what you really, I think the best solution is to find something that software will do everything you want it to do, because then you can do it on the computer. Right, yeah. Uh, and not have to use the front screen. And I, it's my impression that um, everything you want to do on the Epson can be done on the Epson software as well as on the front panel. Okay. My only concern was, you know, sometimes some of that software isn't accessible. Well, that's another matter, and if it's yeah. not, shame on them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you that know, would, yeah. Kind of a, a moving target, you know. You never yeah. know. So, so, so yeah. fill me in then. So, uh, you're using Jaws. Yeah. Well, actually, I use uh, I use Jaws. I use one at. Um, it's NVDA. It's, yeah. uh, uh, it's a free one. How do you like this? That's an open source solution that I've... It is an open source solution, and it is really good. Is it? it oh, is that's exciting, because JAWS is thousands of dollars. Yeah. It actually works really, really well uh, in Windows 10. It actually reads some things better than JAWS does. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty incredible, some of the stuff that they've actually um, accomplished on that. So, software. but some di like dialog boxes you can't read into the the screen reader won't see it. It depends on how they coded it. You know, yeah. if they use standard controls and things like that, it a lot of it'll work just fine. But when they get really graphical with things, you know, to to make it look nice, a lot of times they don't put in text labels or you right, know, right? And, and so you're you're tabbing through this stuff and it just says button. And you're like, okay, well, <laughs> this is this is true on the websites too. You know, it's very easy to design yeah. a website that cannot be easily navigated by blind users, uh, and it's also very easy to make sure that it can. But people yeah, just aren't really, aware of it. Yeah, it's really exciting to see some of the stuff that Apple does, uh, especially like with their developer conferences, where they actually have yeah, they've really uh, focused on this, haven't they? You know, whole whole uh, talks on accessibility stuff. Yeah. Microsoft hired a woman. I met her at a at a, a conference to go cross all the divisions to inf you know really make sure accessibility was uh, was a forefront for them. But I don't yeah. know if they've been able to do that. It's a big company with a lot of well, engineers. That's the thing. There, you know, there's so many departments there. You yeah. know, so many divisions and all that. It's so do you use a Mac? I don't. I use an iPhone. Um, but, and and so, you yeah. use Windows on your desktop. Right. Um, boy, I just don't know. I, I wish I could give you better advice. I don't yeah. have any experience with the Epson uh, drivers on Windows and screen readers. I mean, they should be pretty standard. I've uh, called a couple of places, you know, just local stores. Going yeah, up. nobody knows, I'm sure. Any, yeah. You know, do you have any, do you just have buttons on them, you know? <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, a couple of times I got a couple of recommendations, but they're like for photo printers. So the, you know, the, H, the HP was good. The, the HP was good. Um, it, it just had buttons, but it was I've had it since I was running XP. Yeah, it was old. That's probably why yeah. it was good. It wasn't fancy because fancy yeah. is the fancy is the bane of accessibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. You well, know. you know what it is. It, it's not using um, uh, universal. Uh, um, I'm not design really. Here's I'm, I'm going to read you something now. I remember Epson's a sponsor. Mm -hmm. I have to say that as a disclaimer. So, because uh, I, I love Epson printers, as I said, I have no experience with accessibility. But I'm reading on Epson's site about the 508 regulation. It says, in 1998, Congress amended Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 to require federal agencies to make their electronic information technology accessible to people with disabilities. This is why, by the way, <laughs> the workplace printers have accessibility built in. The standards mm -hmm. define electronic and information technology. 
Uh, Epson supports the effort of the federal government in making technology accessible for people with disabilities and is committed to assisting government customers <laughs> to conform to 508. So, but what they do say is Epson offers many products to meet those standards. And there is a document. It's called the VPAT, outlining accessibility information for various product, product categories. And they say, here's how you get it. You email them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you, I, you know, it's just terrible, isn't it? You email Epson. You ready for this? Epson underscore VPAT underscore section 508 underscore at mailpc.custhelp.com. And you can say to them in this email, what the what is, yeah. uh, is the Epson Workforce Control Panel Screen Reader Accessible? Yeah. I wish um, that that's a ridiculous... I mean, they're, you know, this is because they have to support this for the government. I might... It would be my guess that they do. <laughs> that they I have, might that, even just call Epson and say, you guys have some with buttons on it. And say... You know? Yeah, right. Say, yeah. say this. Say, well, I'm inter interested in Section 508 compatibility in regards to VPAT. So, uh, and I'm thinking about buying 8,000 of your printers for my governmental agency. Tell mm -hmm. me, tell me, Epson, <laughs> how, how accessible is your control panel? Obviously, yeah. the push button one on the front of the printer isn't. The real question is, does the software on the computer allow a screen reader to navigate it? If it does, I think you're, go you're good. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that that's their answer is, well, email this ridiculous address. <laughs> there was recently a company that was advertising a, an accessibility position at their, at their, in their company. Yeah. And so when you go to the to apply for the, the, the job, you go through this whole process, and at the very end there's a CAPTCHA that is not accessible. Oh, nice. And so there's no way to actually... So you can't really it. apply. You can't really apply for it. Yeah, we don't want we don't we don't want robots, and we don't want you. Yeah, exactly. that's the message. Yeah, that's the message. Well, I'm sorry, uh, and I and I, I you know I, sometimes I tell my staff, you know what we can do, we should do, we should wear blindfolds for a week, and just see how hard it is to use this stuff. But you know, it wouldn't even be a good test because we have no experience. So you know, I'm sure the first time you use screen readers, it was difficult. It takes a while. It takes a while. But yeah, I am I so see. impressed by what people are able to do. Yeah. The human mind is amazingly adaptable. And uh, and if if technology companies would just pay attention and make sure their stuff's accessible, they'd have a bigger audience. Hey, I don't have information for you, Den, but maybe somebody listening does, and we'll put it on the website, techguylabs.com. We've been, you know, we've been trying to figure out how do we do accessibility. We can't. We just can't. Unless What we should do is hire a blind... The problem, well, here's the other issue. I could hire a blind uh, a host, which would be great and easy. But then there's other accessibility. You know, because the, the thing about accessibility and adaptive technologies is that it can be of, different for every person. So there's really no way for us to handle this well. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 88. 88. Ask Leo. John in Ohio is next. Hi, John. Leo Laporte here. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing very well. I just wanted to call in and comment about your last caller and yes. um, the workforce uh, compatibility question that she had. Fantastic. Um, now, talk I about use... instant response. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. I use the uh, Epson Workforce 845, and I'm a Zoom text uh, user with speech, and it works perfectly great with it. That's all we needed to know. Perfect. They don't do anything fancy with the software. You don't need to use the front panel. It's all there, and your screen reader it's all handles right it. There on the screen. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you, John. You're I'm very sure, welcome. I'm here. sure Thank Dan you. will be very happy to hear that. Thank you for the call. Isn't that Thanks that's for the call. that's the power? That's why we do this. I you know uh, in the early days of computing, <clears throat> we all were members of user groups. That's where uh, Wozniak, Steve Wozniak, brought the first Apple One computer to the Homebrew Computer Club. He dragged Steve Jobs along, too, because Steve didn't want to go. He said, come on, Steve, you got to go. And he showed everybody, look, you can build your own computer here. We'll sell the parts. That's how Apple got started. Computer user groups. And we needed them in those days because uh, you know, we nobody was going to help us. We had to help ourselves. And that's kind of what this is like, isn't it? 
It's a modern day computer user group. We help each other. Thank you. That's awesome. Chris in Miami. Hi, Chris. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think what happens is Chris gets on the line, then goes to sleep for an hour and a half. <laughs> and then I pick up and I go, Chris, and he goes, Wah! Ah, I'm here. Hi, Chris. Really, I, you know what it is? You, well, you know, I'm, I, I, I signed up for your newsletter because I oh, got the email. Nice. Yeah, well, I've got to have that. You don't get enough email, huh? I, you know, I don't get enough of anything that you're doing over there in Petaluma. I know. We keep I, it a secret. I am not, I you know what? So. I am yeah. historically in. You know, personality-wise, against marketing of any kind, right? Which is too bad because I'm I'm trying to have a business here, but <laughs> I just don't like promoting it. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to admit, but it's true. Your new studio that you had put out on the, the Twitter. You like uh, that picture? Oh wow, that's that's nice. Well, it's empty. That's why there's nothing in it. It's four I walls. Do so much with it, though. Well, that's right. It's a blank slate. Yeah. No, we're we're uh, yeah. deal's not done. I know. These things, there's many a slip to its the to cup in the lip, but uh, we're hopeful because uh, they're turning this lovely studio that we built at a great expense five years ago into a brewery. Oh, because dear. the Petaluma doesn't have enough beer, apparently. <laughs> so they're going to put big vats of fermenting malt in right where I'm sitting. And that wouldn't really be conducive to a radio show, so we're going to find no. somewhere else. So, you know, I wanted to, um, I heard Miss Susan on the call today about women in the tech industry, and it brought me back to last week's call with the pick, 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 but, I mean, this is fine. I get it. And, and you know, I gave one woman a chance once when it came to tech. That was Miss, that was Kim Commando. Are you an evil, get, sexist pig? I'm, you know, I... <laughs> No, there are, I, there are. I'm open-minded. Please, actually. because it really is hard for women in technology. Because I know, I know, I know. People mistreat them, and uh, we want more women in our workplace. We want more women designing hardware and software. Because why not? Why, why only take half of the world's brains? I agree with you. I'm, I'm not against this. It's just I think there's always something behind. Like, look at Kim Commando. I gave her a chance. A I gave her too many chances, and you know what? She never got back in touch with me. I even asked friends of mine that used to listen to her, and I said, you know what? We're all going in with Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That's it. We're all <laughs> That's it. We're done with you. We're done with you. Well, yeah, I, you know, uh, Kim, uh, we don't usually mention Kim because she's it's right. like uh, Shell right. mentioning Exxon. She's a competitor. Right. Uh, but uh, she does. Uh, she's actually much bigger. She's in more markets than my show ever was or ever will be, and uh, you know, uh, God bless her. I think anybody who's right. helping people understand technology is doing God's work. So well, we I'm all for I'm that. all for it. But right. if you would, but I also am all for listening to me instead of her. Right. Well, <laughs> I can't. We're all I can't. We're all well, I'm not a good. I'm not a good marketer. But on the other hand, if you want to listen to me, I won't stop you. No, and that's what we all do. We Thank all, you. all Thank over you, Chris. Miami and all over, all came Thank over. You. Let's go to Leo Thank because, you. you know, I'm sure... Not, it has nothing to do with gender, by the way. Huh? That has nothing to do with gender. No, it has to do In with... In fact, I'm sure things. you would prefer if I were an attractive woman. Not really. Oh. I like you just the way you are. <laughs> that says a Leo lot about you, Chris. This guy works for me. <laughs> In Not any me. event. And, and I also apologize to all the tech guys out there who I characterized yeah, on the last show as sitting in the back of a fly-specked, cluttered <laughs> shop with old technology and a T-shirt and stains. And Actually, I said it wasn't, it wasn't a stained T-shirt. It was a Windows 95 Start Me Up T-shirt, smoking Luckies and waiting for somebody to come in with a computer problem. <laughs> there are guys. I know that guy. I'm just saying. I know that guy, but there are others that are yeah. completely not like that. Some of them are even women. Yeah, you're right. Thank yeah. God. Well, you've made a name for yourself. You've done very well, and, and we like everything <laughs> you, the way you got it. Thank You're you, You're like Chris. the godfather of tech. In fact, I was thinking of a billboard here in Miami now. For me? Sure. Can you put you it next to it. that upside-down house <laughs> that got, that's like, stood, it's on its roof? The hurricane <laughs> house? That's like uh -oh. an amusement, what is that, an amusement park? What is that? I have no idea. You've never that. seen that? There's a, it's on, no. it's in, yeah. No, but it sounds interesting. No, it's Maybe wonderful. It yeah, well, you know, I think the more we get, I can never get enough of what you do. I think you're I, absolutely. Oh, you're very kind. Better. 
I, I am. Playing you're very it. kind. Thank you. Now, can I answer a question for you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> unless, unless you don't really care. If you don't care, I, I don't need to. No, 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 no. Actually, I, I am actually calling for something else. I want to replace my hard drive with a good SSD, but I just don't know which one. Oh, the price point. I'm glad you called. Uh, here, this is a revolution is going on that the solid state drives, which are faster and truthfully more reliable than spinning drives, mm -hmm. were traditionally really expensive, as much as a dollar a gigabyte. You know, a spinning drive, now they've got down to pennies a gigabyte. Uh, and there still is a differential, but the, the solid state drives are dropping in price, as everything does in technology. Samsung makes the best one. Uh, these are their EVO drives. And really, it's a no-brainer to get a Samsung EVO. The current models are the 850s. Um, and a number of companies will take their hardware and put, uh, you know, wrap it around with their stuff. But look, but if you're going to just buy an upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would look for, the Samsung EVO. Now, you don't want to put an SSD drive in a computer that is has a slow bus. I mean, it's not that you don't want to, but you won't see all the benefit. Uh, these solid-state drives are so fast that they will saturate a SATA 3 bus. They'll use every bit. And the bus is the, where the data goes through. It's the tunnel the data goes through. And you want the tunnel to be big enough to handle all the data that's going to come off the hard drive. The SATA 1, serial ATA Interforce 1, went at 1.5 gigabits per second. That's about 150 megabytes per second. But this drive, the EVO, does 450 megabytes a second. To get that kind of throughput, you want a SATA 2 or even a SATA 3 connection. It's just going to give you the better results. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah, uh, little peaches and herb. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888, ask Leo. Happy Valentine's Day. I didn't, didn't say that. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you're having a good good one with your loved one mike twin falls idaho hi mike you're on the air leo laporte here hello leo hello Look, mike you there, and you were talking about a uh to a guy that uh, was doing over the air stuff and you mentioned the channel master yeah uh, do you use that i have one yeah what, what do you give me a review because i've never used one well it's a pretty good deal i opted because it, it comes with two options one without an internal hard drive uh, oh, so you could just put your own internal. in. Yeah, and, and what I ended up doing, because their internal drive was like 150 bucks additional. And it's only, uh, I think it was, I think it was like, a, I don't know, uh, forget the size Maybe of it. Maybe 500 gigs or something. But yeah, it'd be nice yeah. to have two or three terabytes. And I went out and got a uh, just a uh, USB yeah. terabyte drive. Yeah, exactly. Our local, uh, well, I can't say it. And USB is fast enough for uh, that to record onto? Oh, it works. It works fine. Great. Uh, and I've had, you know, the guide on it is good, and it's the only one out there that I could find that does more than one, that you can record more than one station or more than one channel at a time, because it'll do two. Yeah. And, of course, there's no fees like there is for the, uh, yeah. the TiVo, which... Yeah, I, I love TiVo, but I really hate it that I had to pay for the uh, guide. Yeah, for like, what is it, the... Uh, 20 bucks a month or yeah, something. Yeah, I just ended up getting the Lifetime, which was like a couple of hundred bucks. But And the, and the guy that comes with the Channel Master that they use seems to be, uh, you know, I mean, it's accurate, had very little problems. The only issue I have with it seems to be with the tuner itself. Yeah. And I, when digital came along, I really didn't realize there were two things with uh, HD, with the high-definition television, where you have signal strength and then signal quality. And the problem I have with it, with a couple of the channels up here, we get like, I think it's like 18 channels all over the air, is there's one in particular, our ABC station, where I'll get 100% signal strength, but the uh, signal quality sometimes goes down to zero. That's weird, because you know, if it's a digital signal, you know, analog signals, <laughs> How we all remember for a certain age ghosting and lines going through the picture and you know you're watching ralph cramden on the honeymooners and there's three of them and all of that was because it was analog signals and analog signals have problems signal path reflection and right. they degrade but they degrade instead of not working digital in theory either works or doesn't work well either that's what i always thought and yeah the thing it's kind of kind of weird is i've got it running through a splitter so i can watch well, that's the over the air uh on a uh you know on my television yeah that so, could be a pro source of problems too of course and i've and i've tried it 
both with and without the splitter, and I haven't really noticed any kind of difference. Yeah, uh, you know, because it's ones and zeros, either the ones and zeros get through or they don't. Well, that's what I was kind of under the impression. And because uh, on the television, I have very little problems, very little pixelization or everything. And I live in an apartment, ground floor, on the opposite side of where all the uh, transmitter towers are. But uh, when I hook up the, uh, the, the DVR, it has uh, in the settings and in the uh, technical information, it lets you look at what the signal strength and the signal quality is. And it's just so bizarre that I'll have like 100% signal strength and I can watch mm -hmm. the signal quality just go from down from zero up to 20, up to 50, up to 60, back down to oh, that 20, is weird. Up to 80. Yeah. And I don't know whether or not, I guess the question I kind of had, and I've talked with Channel Master Tech Support, they finally just quit responding to emails. <laughs> uh, we can't help they, you. They had me do everything from, you know, doing a factory reset. Uh, they wanted me to change my zip code. Ah! Which, uh, which that, that's weird. called grasping at straws. I don't think that's yeah. going to affect the signal quality. Well, so here's the, the, here's the deal. Uh, there's somebody in the chat room says, uh, I had exactly the same problem with my Channel Master. And uh, he said, Channel Master could never figure it out. I could never figure it out. But I did move it to another room, and it seems to work fine. Well, before we moved into the apartment, we lived in a house, and I had an outdoor antenna. And I really didn't notice too much of a problem there, with exception with the ABC. And I'm just kind of wondering if the television transmitter here, and the way it operates here in Twin Falls, we don't have the only local affiliate we have is CBS. The others kind of retransmit kind of out of uh, Boise. They may you know, even be analog because, you know, there are, it, analog isn't gone in broadcast. Some, uh, the FCC allowed some, especially in the smaller markets, stations to stay analog. Yeah. I'm wondering, this sounds like analog misbehavior, and I'm wondering well, if they know. may be analog. Well, I'm getting, you know, I get high definition. It comes out with uh, it's 760. Well, oh, you can send the best. You know what? You can send it. You can send HD over analog. That doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, uh, you know, I you know I don't know, but it, uh, it it does sound like there may be crosstalk of some kind introduced. Um, it may be that it's hunting. You know what? This happens with smartphones as well. If you could see two signals, or even laptops, if you could see two signals for the same thing, and maybe that's what's happening because you've got these repeaters. It may be going back and forth saying, well, there's one here. Oh, wait a minute, there's one here. Oh, there's one here. But where there's one here. And I think that's probably why they wanted you to change the zip code. Um, the only thing I haven't done was actually contact, like, the engineers at the at the ABC affiliate here and ask them. I you might ask them, is there more than one source on this frequency? It may be that they have a repeater and you're going back and forth. I don't, it's an odd thing, and I don't know what it is, and I, I wish I could help you on this. Yeah, and the, uh, the weird thing is, is it seems to it seems to change throughout the day, too. Yeah, yeah. well, that's Sometimes consistent. It works fine. The rest of the All of that's consistent with analog radio frequency RF. Um, yeah. yes. well, and I mean, ultimately, it's radio frequency. It's just that it's ones and zeros being sent instead of a sine wave or a digital wave. Yeah. I mean, an analog wave. Um, and and I you can have you know path problems on digital signals as well. Gosh, I just I just don't know. Uh, this might be another one for TVFool.com. You give it your zip code, it'll give you some information about the antennas. Yeah, and, I'll have to check that. Yeah, that's a really that. useful site, especially because it's crowdsourced. They have a lot of good stuff there. You know, we did, uh, you know, some TV uh, inside interior uh, indoor antenna checking. What I've got is a wine guard now. That yeah, the wine guards are good. Walls. So a flat one. But, and I had a Turk that I used in the other house, and it worked fine, but here it's kind of, it, it all depends on the sweet spots. Welcome to and RF. It's, the, <laughs> it's, a, it's a voodoo yeah. sign. I mean, it's just voodoo. Um, yeah. The TV fool will tell you if there are other signals on that same frequency. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of thing to look for. Um, maybe it's close, and, you're, and, the, and the tuners, you know, I mean, is, is it KSAW? Yeah. Uh huh. That is uh, that that I think is uh, something in the chat room saying. Oh yeah, that's a low power station. That yeah, means it may power. be it may be analog. A lot of low powers are still analog. Uh, yes, it is. So I guess TV Fool had the answer. So uh, that could be the source of the problem. And uh, the, the what's the fix? <laughs> I don't know. And I, I, I think an outdoor antenna. I think an outdoor antenna would be the fix. To be honest.
Yeah, unfortunately, in the apartment, I can't do that. <sighs> but, uh, but you know, maybe I can get KSAW to change their uh, change their uh, transmission. Yeah. Hey. Technology. Hey, fix this. <laughs> I can't watch TV. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you imagine you being the chief on? engineer of uh, of these stations? How hard. This is for them. You know, they first they had to change, and then they didn't, and oh, my gosh, crazy. Yeah, outdoor is going to always be better. What you're seeing is caused by the fact that it's an indoor antenna. Positioning is critical, where it, not just where it is in the room, where it is in the house, all of that stuff. And the more you can play with that and see what happens, uh, the better the results. This all seems consistent with multi-path interference, which can affect digital as well. Um, I, I can't, you know, I can't give you more than that. Uh, TV Fool is a great source of information, and it's just going to take a lot of trial and error, I believe. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888 Ask. Leo, more of your calls to come. Radio Rod says you need a directional outdoor antenna, but you can't. So the problem is he's in an apartment. He can't do it. We got some RF RF gurus in the studio. That's in the uh, audience. That's nice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Uh, back to the phones we go here. Uh, Michael on the line from Los Angeles. Hey, Michael. Hey, Leo. How's it going? It's great. How are you? I'm all right. So yeah. listen, I've got a Motorola Razor. Okay. I downloaded the new Android. It's the um. It's the KitKat 4.4. Mm -hmm. So I've got two major problems. I can't seem to get more than an hour out of this phone. Oy, yay, yay, uh, um, uh, that's not very much. No, no. I mean, I had it plugged in everywhere, and I seem to have more cables than I had in the past. But it's really frustrating. There's no way to back out of this thing in the old version. Uh, so you you were getting how you were getting? First of all, what version of Android was it? I mean, KitKat's pretty old. Um, it, you know, it just came about two weeks ago. Just gave me a notice, and I clicked yes, and I've been sorry. See, we're, so KitKat is uh, Android 4.0. Then there was Lollipop 5.0. The current version is Marshmallow. They love desserts at Google. 6.0. So you're two versions behind now. This is what they offered. and then No, no, and that's very common uh, with older phones. And you had, before you installed KitKat, you had better battery life? Much better. The phone was awesome. That's, that's why I've held on to it for so How long. How frustrating is that? This week is the first time I thought about heaving this thing out and actually going to an Apple. All right. So uh, you probably can go back to uh, Ice Cream Sandwich, which is, I presume, the, the version before KitKat. I presume that's the one you had, or was it Jelly Bean? Yeah, that sounds similar. Jelly Bean, or <laughs> it was either for three or four. Or, I don't know. So <laughs> That is what it came with, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, I think I had the ice cream. It thing. started with, uh, let's see, the first one uh, was ginger. There was gingerbread, and there was eclair, and <laughs> they had all these desserts. So um, here, yeah, go right. to a website, xda-developers.com. XDA. Dash developers .com. This is the Android enthusiast forums where they have every version of everything they ever made for every phone. And you're going to search for your exact model of Razor. So it's going to, it may even be down to the carrier, like the AT&T Motorola Razor phone. And okay. look, in the, look in the menu, it'll have a model number. You want to match exactly. Right. Uh, even down to the carrier. And then they will tell you how... You, and this I would do, you can root it, which is a trivial and uh, safe thing to do that gives you full permissions to do anything you want to the phone. And oh. then put your own custom recovery on it, which means you can install other software. You could install the stock software that came with it. That'll be available somewhere on that site. Or you could try, uh, and it might be worth doing it, alternative uh, versions of Android. Even down to probably going right up to uh, CyanogenMod Mod 12 and get you the, the latest version. Maybe not Marshmallow, but uh, definitely Lollipop. Something closer than I have. Yeah. yeah. I keep getting a warning also. Um, you know, I've got a good-sized SD card in there. That's yeah. where I try to load all my photos and music. 
and this version doesn't allow you to download anything to the car. Yeah, they, ch you know, now in Marshmallow, the, the Google gave up on that. <laughs> but you're in that bad. You're back a couple of years now <laughs> when it was so still stupid. bad. So stupid. <laughs> you could go backwards and you could go forwards, but you don't want to stay in the middle. I understand. Make sure, by the way, somebody's saying, and this is true, that you do a full like a reboot to the phone and everything to make sure that, you know, but if that's reducing battery life, let's go back. Let's go back in yeah, time. Yeah, because I um I use it quite a bit. I mean, I'm on the web quite a bit, and I have this thing tethered to my laptop all the time. So I'm definitely on the phone a lot. At least on the laptop, it's still getting a charge. But now I just switched to Bluetooth tethering, so now i got to plug it back in the wall. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's such a great phone. I'm going to go back to getting one of these briefcase phones. <laughs> Better battery life. Actually, not really. The ones you carried over your shoulder had a couple of hours. <laughs> they, yeah, even though they were giant batteries. Yeah, if I can get the same plan, I'd be happy with it. A lot easier to drive with that thing on your shoulder than this little thing. <sighs> Sorry, that is that is a pain. I have to say, uh, the tech world does not support folks who wish to stay in the past. They really want you to buy something new. And uh, in this case, you know, you'd certainly be get better battery life if you got a newer phone. You may not get, ironically, you may not get the battery life you were getting if you were getting remarkable battery life on that thing. I'm sorry, that stinks. That's just a shame. George is in Houston, Texas. Hey, George. Hi, hi there. Um, I w am looking for an audio splitter. Uh, a device, a program that will allow me to load up a WAV file and or uh, MP3 file and break the big file into smaller files. Uh, I don't need any fancy editing or processing or anything like that. Just break up a large file into smaller files. And I found a few, but some of them use a silence as their guide, and I don't want that. No, no. You, you don't want to do it automatically. Actually, I, I just want to mark off the, the individual points and hit a button and they break it into a smaller file. The one I used for years is MP3 Splitter. Um, it was exactly for this purpose, which was, hey, you got a giant MP3. Nowadays, nobody really does this anymore because uh, bandwidth is plentiful. Hard drives are gigantic. And so even if it's a you know large mp3 it's not ever going to be that large but if you want to split them up mp3 splitter uh that's what we used for years to do this you can also do it with any audio editor and the uh, chat room's telling me uh, reminding me that audacity is free on all platforms it's an open source project you might need to download an mp3 encoder decoder called lame l-a-m-e if uh if it's mp3s you want to work on but it'll open waves no problem and then you can just you can split it any way you want it, basically by editing. You're looking at the waveform or listening to it, and you say, yeah, right there, and you can put a mark there. Uh, yeah, right there, put another mark there, and then just go sip, sip, with your virtual scissors and snip it in two. Laura, South Carolina, our last call of the day. Hi, Laura. Hello, Leo. Um, I have a quick question for you. Yes. Um, now, you may be wishing you have Paul and Mary Jo sitting with you when I ask you this, but um, <laughs> now that Microsoft is going to this Windows 10 and always Windows 10 from here on out, they're not going to be allowing you to put previous versions on computers. Right. Is that only 7 and 8 back? Are they going to give you time to acclimate to the new version of 10? Yeah. Like we're on. Don't get all don't get all worried about that. What Microsoft says, and it scared a lot of people, and it really isn't going to be an issue. First of all, it's not not till next year. But they say we have to warn you that new uh, chips are coming out from Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, and others that would require a lot of work for us to make Windows Seven and older versions work on. Okay. So we can't promise you. That if you get a computer in next year, anything you buy today is fine. That you get a computer next year, that it will be able to run Windows 7. And you're going to probably have to run Windows 10 because we're just not going to make the changes to Windows 7 to make it work. Okay, because what I was worried about was I, uh, as this will be your third uh, visually impaired caller of the day, but 
What I'm worried about is, like, say they make major changes to 10.2. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. You want to, you need a stable platform. Exactly. And you don't want it to change. I understand that. Yeah. Now, it takes a while for the adaptable software to catch exactly. up to Windows. Now, remember, though, if you take that free upgrade, that you will have to apply updates. That's a requirement, and that's for security reasons. But I don't anticipate big UI changes for some time. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows on the Netcast Network. It's called TWIT, T-W-I-T. -T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. You even get your daily dose of tech news with Tech News Today. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, this Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.